it should have been live on my side. That's the thing. Like, I selected the event. I'll have to talk to Welcome about it. Or not Welcome to say, but, like, the uh, chat about it later on Welcome's uh, thing. Oh, oh, I should get off of this. Mm. So what parts of the room are actually in the frame? Uh, that's a great question. <laughs> I'll tell you when I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Like, what areas of the room do I need to clean? <laughs> <laughs> Wherever the camera can see, which is currently nowhere. <laughs> the point is... is the main point is they can hear you. At least I think I can. Um, the video I can live live without out of. But it, it, as long as they can hear you is the main thing. Uh, let's see here. It's been an eventful you... evening. <laughs> are you having trouble hearing me or are you having trouble hearing uh, 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 Quinn? Hola. Do, 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 do. Okay. As long as you can hear him. It's been... Yeah, we Someday got people... Camera to work. USB thing. connected. Clearly. Right. Now. <laughs> do your thing with the webcam. Alright, well, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, you, you let me know when... I'll, I'll, pull, I'll pull up your, uh, your webcam if you ever get it started so they can see you. Yeah, it sounds great. All right. So firstly, I'm going to say I'm going to put down some ground rules about this whole tier list thing. I have a couple of uh, clear, uh, uh, qualifications that they had to meet to be even on this list. Uh, the, the basic qualifications we had were it had to be... Oh, Quinn, what did I tell you? Dang it, my brain is now eluding me. I'm going to go look up exactly what I said when building this list. Uh... Okay, it had to be it had to be a blaster. It had to be a completely three D printed blaster that didn't need to that didn't need an official Nerf blaster to go along with it. So that something like that would roll out like the Second Wind and the Spamp and stuff like that. So it had to be completely its own thing. I have a little bit of an echo. Let's see if I can turn that down a little bit. I might just be talking too loud. Uh, yeah, I think it's just because of my mic. Um, mm -hmm. So let me... I can... It's not on my or... end, so I'm curious if it... Oh, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, currently, there are 60 blasters on this list that we're going to be going through. It's going to be a fun night. Oh, dear Lord. <laughs> yeah, you didn't know what you were signing up for, did you? <laughs> so it has to be a standalone 3D-printed blaster, so basically no extra blasters, so no Nerf uh, official blasters. <laughs> that's essentially what's happening, Cordell. Yes, absolutely. No, that's actually what Quinn here is for. You know me. You know I'm too nice. Quinn's here to shit on everybody else's designs. <laughs> um, <laughs> and the other criteria was it had to be be able to be made by the community. By that I mean you have to be able to access the files and print your own. Um so that did rule out a couple of others, like the uh, Out of Darts is Jupiter, Proud Pop, and whatnot. Because uh, nothing against those, it's just the qualifications for this list to try and compact things a little bit. I ended up deciding that it had to be something the community itself could make from scratch. Uh, the last qualification was the blaster. I had to have seen, not, not me personally, but like there had to have been other builds of the blaster other than its original creator so that ruled off a bunch of others to where yes there was a blaster design but the only one who had actually built one was the creator because it tended to be over complicated because these are all about community built blasters and blasters that the community can more easily build um <laughs> and the way we're going to be ranking them i have a whole um i have i think five criteria for ranking them there is, pull it up here, there's the ease of printing, how easy it is to print, how easy it is to assemble, the aesthetics, the performance, 
and how fun it is. Those are the five things that we're looking at for each of these blasters. Uh, and when I say performance, I'm not talking about like comparing like their in, uh, FPS compared to each other, but this blaster, for what it's made for, what performance are you getting out of it? So, we are, if Quinn is ready, Quinn, can you see the uh, tier list on your end? Yeah, I can see it. Um, I'm still futzing with camera. <laughs> oh, you're good. Don't mind me. As long as you're able to contribute. <laughs> now, funny enough, Trip, you're not late. I'm the one who's late this time. All right. Who's ready to get this started? All right, now I'm hearing a little bit of an echo. Uh, the first one we have up is... Uh, one of my personal favorite blasters, which is the Spring Thunder. Uh, obviously, we have our rankings of S. Oh, no, you don't. You like the Spring Thunder? No, I'm saying that's what I'm starting with. I'm starting with my favorite blaster that I currently own is the Spring Thunder. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to be going through this based off my own ranking system that I made, which is ease of printing, ease of assembly, aesthetics, performance, and fun. Uh, for, as far as ease of printing goes, I would consider it to be fairly easy. You have to put a little bit of support on it, but overall it's a very simple blaster to print. Uh, assembly is another matter. That The Spring Thunder is not the easiest blaster to assemble. It can be, if anybody else was here for the Spring Thunder stream, which I was literally like tripping over myself the entire time. <laughs> oh, man. So I... I I don't yeah, think it's so Spring Thunder's like we just finished printing two of them now. Mm -hmm. I would say that the bolt assembly and all the small pieces are probably the hardest to print support for, with the minor yeah. exception of there's a couple pieces on body that you need just a little bit. But when yeah. once the assembly comes around, if you're not paying attention to build guides, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one can simply get lost. That's very true. Uh, I am curious, did you end up putting a dent in the plunger tube like the instructions say? What dent? Uh, look, do you have model 5 or 6? That's right, you have model 5, right? 5. Okay, yeah, model 6, you're supposed yeah. to put a dent in the plunger tube to lock it into place. I ended up putting on just, if you put on an extra O-ring instead of a dent, it it's it's hard to explain, Alpha, because it's it's... You're supposed to dent the plunger tube to lock it into place. It's very... I didn't end up doing that. In fact, I, I, I was too scared to do that. So I went ahead and just threw an extra O-ring on it, which held it in place very nicely. I don't know how that's going to affect performance-wise. It seemed to perform where it should. But, uh, yeah, that, that's what I ended up doing instead of putting a dent in the plunger tube. It, it was definitely an interesting uh, choice, for sure me pardon me all right so that's assembly uh which obviously we say is definitely on the harder side of blasters to build uh then we have aesthetics and i guess with this one we'll also talk about like what you can do with the blaster there are a lot of uh aesthetic options for the spring thunder as well like obviously i think the base spring thunder is not the best looking blaster but i think there are a lot of Aesthetic, ex aesthetic accessories that really help with the uh, design and how it looks. Any thoughts on aesthetics, Quinn? The Spring Thunder, multiple different options, like you said. I would say, yeah, that's a decent enough variety. I think you could rank it pretty high just because of the different variety types. Like, I just did the angled stock... Um, different type of pump grip and a different handle and it looks different than most of the majority of spring thunders just because it's got different parts on it how yeah uh and then for next it would be performance now under performance we're going to talk about how the blaster functions how easy is it to use along with like the actual like fps and ranges and whatever else that we know about it um uh for the spring thunder looking at the performance is it's it's made to be a shotgun firing multiple objects at the same time 
Uh, I think a single nerf dart gets 120 FPS out of it, um, while three rival round, I think it's 90, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, so I, while it's not breaking the FPS limits by any means, it's also designed to be a shotgun. And there are also sniper barrel, there's also a sniper barrel designed for it that actually gets you up to 180, 200 FPS around those ranges. So it does have performance, but like obviously you, when you go to the higher performance, you're obviously going to lose the shotgun capabilities of the Spring Thunder. But you keep the shell ejection part of it. Have you? Yeah. Sorry, Go ahead, Gwen. I didn't mean to webcams cut you off there. Up. <laughs> oh, webcams up. Yeah. Video not challenged or special. Oh, it's okay. I'm still challenged. <laughs> hey, there you are. <laughs> I have no idea how this looks because I'm a tiny little screen. Uh, well. I, I haven't figured out how to crop yet in this, so, like, I still have, like, a lot of extra stuff. I don't know how to get this bigger. Um, and, yes, there's a lot of community extra bits as well for it to allow you to bring. And there's pretty much a shell for every single ammo type out there, too. So, if it's an ammo type, I think the only thing it doesn't shoot is Vortex, I think, and maybe Koosh Balls. <laughs> Really most of the ammo types. Yeah, most of the ammo types. Um, have you fired off the uh, Spring Thunder at all, Quinn? Yes. Um, been having too much fun. I should get it in stream. <laughs> you went to actually go get the Spring Thunder. <laughs> there it is. It, it's a little bigger compared to the other blasters for some reason. <laughs> um, well, I, I mean, it's. Ran counter sinks <laughs> store so i'm missing one tap piece mm. um i have it printed off but so far i've actually loved it it's working really well um the map favor i didn't think it was going to be that good and then it ended up being amazing yeah like that was something that like i had to figure out how to how you're supposed to use the uh Match saver, it took me up until recently to figure out the most uh, effective way is when you're actually holding it, you just literally slide the shell into the chamber. Yeah, that was like, oh, that's legit amazing. Okay. Yeah, and it works <laughs> so well. Fun fact, you can actually do it with full-length mega darts, too. So if you match saver a full-length mega, it'll chamber just fine. It can. It can. The, uh, the dart will sometimes catch on the pieces on the inside, but for the most part, yes, it can. It absolutely can. Yeah. Um, I was just thinking to myself, I'm like, oh, that's one less way, and maybe you don't have to like sacrifice a mega dart. Exactly. I, I well, I, I I just committed to cutting down my. Uh, I think most of the groups I attend to uh, uh, attend allow, I think what they call two thirds mega, as long as it's like two thirds of the mega dart, they still count it as mega, which is what uh, the dart cutter that I designed, the longest setting that cuts it like right flush with the. Uh, uh, Spring Thunder shell. Because uh, yeah, I made that forever ago specifically for cutting Mega Darts to go into my uh, Spring Thunder shells. Um, but as far as performance goes, I would say it does what it's supposed to do and it can go into those higher FPS ranges with the Sniper Barrel. So I think uh, uh, it is a bit of a uh, uh, stiff prime. So it is a heavy prime of a blaster. And It's, I was like, I'm trying, <laughs> you can tell it's my favorite blaster. I don't want to say anything negative about it. It's like, I, I do think that Prime is a hindrance for some people. It's something that does take getting used to. It's not something like that you can just, just Prime off the bat and be like, oh yeah, no, this is perfect. It takes time getting used to the way it Primes, the chambering, the shell. So it, it's something that takes practice. Any more yeah, thoughts on sure. The, the Prime, maybe it's just because of my, my size, I've never had this issue, especially compared to the Lucy Sink. Um, mm -hmm. It's quite light on the Spring Thunder. <laughs> um, the Gecko with the 12 kilogram is actually reasonable. Oh, I forget. I can't 
can't deprime either of those because they're slam fire. Um, I would say it's slightly more than a Talon Claw if it's really smooth. Okay. Are you talking about for the, the Spring Thunder? For the Spring Thunder? Yeah. Just because the priming bars add a lot of friction to the parts, um, just because yeah. of all the intricate pieces. Yeah, it's a similar issue with the FTEC. Which, apparently, like, I'm saying completely wrong, so I'll specify that. It's technically called the F-Tech, for, like, phone technician, F-Tech. But for some reason, I got it just stuck in my head that I'm like, yeah, it's the FTEC, which, in my opinion, sounds better, but I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be pronounced F-Tech. So that, that's well, a that's a my B. <laughs> I was an FTC robotics competition, so I can't see it. <laughs> uh, see, this is why I have Quinn here, Trip. I have. Oh, are you watching the chat at all, Quinn? Um, I can't. I can only see your blaster. Okay. So I guess I should try to pull that up since I'm actually in head. <laughs> I could probably do both as long as I yeah. mute your YouTube. If you can see, Trip is saying it's an A or B tier. Uh, well, let's get to cover up our last category, which is fun of how fun it is to use the Spring Thunder. Of which I will say the Spring Thunder is probably one of the most fun blasters to use. One of the most fun blasters to use, for me personally. Uh, there's nothing just like a shell ejecting blaster. You all know me. I am all about shell ejecting shotguns. That's just, that's my thing. <laughs> so that that's, if, if I can make the Spring Thunder viable for any event, I will be using it. Which is why I've used my Spring Thunder from 120 fps all the way to 250 fps groups so i will always find a way to use my spring thunder yeah because i love using it that much how about you quinn <laughs> yeah i would say the practicality of a spring thunder in a casual war setting is very low and niche mm -hmm. um the variety of ammo types is what makes it any sort of usable in my opinion for a yeah. war setting but fun wise i totally agree that it is extremely it just makes it giddy whenever you shoot the shovel What's yeah it? absolutely um Fair and enough. that's kind of why we made our breaking win to be honest uh, because <laughs> like oh spring thunder size almost naturally <laughs> do anything with like, but we love shells. <laughs> <laughs> so, based, so based off everything we've talked about with the Spring Thunder, our lengthy conversation, me personally, I would love to put it in S tier, but I have a feeling it's probably more of an A tier blaster. I don't think it can quite break into the S tier. Um, for as much as I love it, uh, speaking from a completely... Uh, outside perspective, just looking at the Spring Thunder for as far as best blasters out there, I think there are a few drawbacks that hold it back from actually breaking into the S tier, but it's absolutely an A tier unless you disagree, Quinn. I would say it's actually on the line between B and A just because really? of its sheer size. Okay. Um, but next to our tricked out uh, tricked out Caliburn up there is super long. Mm -hmm. It's only like a few inches shorter with a stock on one of these. Yeah. And like wielding it, ammo carry, like space efficiency. That's I think true. that's where it starts dropping the tier levels. But I think that just from the variety of ammo types and whatever it can fire, whatever your needs are, that's where yeah. it gets closer to the A tier. So I think it gotcha. rides that line. Okay. So we'll just put that comfortably into the A tier. Uh, so Spring Thunder we have in A tier, and I don't think I could have let it. <laughs> I don't think I don't think I could have put the Spring Thunder any lower than A without a fight. <laughs> uh, because and hey, you know what? This is my list. I'll do what I want. <laughs> I'm going to start taking apart my gecko and making better and better. Well, next up we have the Breaking Wind. I figure we get out the two most uh, emotional blasters first. <laughs> the Breaking Wind and the Spring Thunder. Uh, I've built the Breaking Wind uh, without a hardware kit. <laughs> uh, so, uh, 
uh, it was one of the blasters that made me decide I'm no longer buying blasters that don't have hardware kits. <laughs> it's not the only one. I think between the Breaking Wind and the Rail Cleaner, I'm like, yep, nope, I'm not sourcing my hardware anymore. I am only buying blasters that have hardware kits. The only blaster I'm going to try and finish that uh, with sourcing my own hardware is going to be the Foma Nature, which we'll get to later. Uh, but yeah, that was one of them where I'm just like, ah, it's such an inconvenience to source your own hardware. Especially because you have to buy a lot of whatever it is you're buying. And then you just end up with a whole bunch of extra hardware. Yeah. Which um, isn't too bad for me because I build blasters all the time, so it's nice having the extra hardware. But if you're just wanting to build that one blaster, it's a huge pain to have to source your own hardware. We might get into Gecko kits and fully assembled. We're, we're working with them currently mm -hmm. to see where this goes. Uh, I'm waiting yeah. for some updated parts. I'm working with them closely on trying to make sure yeah. things are functioning properly. Um, yeah. I, I got to get mine printed. I'll probably be doing that over the weekend is getting my Gecko printed. Oddly enough, the turnaround piece in here that redirects the air, make sure that's very filled with more parameters. I broke my last one. I don't know how. But uh, it snapped well, off where the barrel was. And that's out of pet G. I'm not sure how I managed that. Hmm. Uh, uh, real quick for Jangler, since he asked, uh, criteria we're going off of is ease of printing, ease of assembly, uh, performance, aesthetics, and fun. Those are the, the criteria, criteria we're judging, judging him off of. Uh, as, as far as, as the blasters, blasters that are allowed into the list, it has to be a fully 3D printed blaster, meaning no extra bits or pieces like no extra blasters like you can't uh like for example the second wind or the spam uh we're not including those because they require a official nerf blasters they had to be completely 3d printed uh we're also only including blasters that uh, the community has access to the files in other words to print their own so it's fine if they want to uh, uh if they have to buy the files that's fine i'm all for paying the creators but the uh, these are basically blasters that you can print, assemble, and do everything pretty much all on your own. That is the criteria we're going off of since he asked. Uh, what were we talking about H2 with the... Metal. <laughs> uh, the, oh, the... Uh, speaking of which... Metal for... plunger? I was going to say, speaking of which, the Breaking Wind, I did find it very easy to print. It was a very easy printed blaster. Uh, didn't have any trouble with any of my parts printing. That was a very simple and, and, and again it's only like what like five pieces six Three, uh, four. no five right if you're not including the um extra bits and you're only including like the base blaster uh and you just go based off of that you could um yeah i think, yeah, I think it's, it's only like five pieces. pieces 11 so you got your T-pole, handle, mm -hmm. bottom plate, trigger guard. Wait, I have oh, a list right guard. here. That's right. I forgot about the whole uh, trigger pieces. That's right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 on the... Really? 11? In invoice. 11 yeah, pieces. But... Okay. Oh, yeah. Plunger small. and... Yeah. Yeah. So okay. you got two large pieces, one medium, and the rest are small. Okay. Yeah, but, like, it's still, like, you could knock that out easily in, like, a day, pretty much. Um, the main body is about uh, 8 to 10 hours. Handle is 4 to 6, depending on parameters. The carrier is 1 to 2, and then everything else is, like... So, yeah, you could still probably print that in a 24 hour. to 45 minutes. Shuffle. If you were to example to throw the, everything onto one print bed, you could technically do it in under 24 hours. Yeah, if you did one color, you would be yeah. about 24 hours. Yeah, you know? <laughs> okay, so it's a very easy print. Uh, as far as assembling it, I'm not in... Uh, 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 question, are you offering Breaking Wind hardware yet? Hardware? Yeah. We, so okay. The issue is we sell out so fast that it never looks like it's <laughs> Right. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. Oh. I was like, I thought so. Yeah, so if you have... So I'm not going to... I'm not going to uh, uh, include my experience with sourcing my own hardware because it is technically available. So if I didn't have to source and cut 
everything, it would have been a much easier... Pro I mean, even still, unlike, and you've revamped the instructions, and those are all really nice now. Uh, honestly, like, my experience with the Breaking Wind Assembly is... I mean, it's much easier to assemble a Spring Thunder now than it was when I first built mine. So I can't imagine it be that, it, that assembling a Spring Thunder is that difficult. Yeah, so the timing issues is probably about the only biggest part that people have, and I think that's their printer dependence. Mm. Um, we've had very minor issues with that, but again, it's probably because of our printer tolerances about what we've designed around. Okay. Um, I would say that assembly can be tricky if you have minimal modding experience. Okay. Um, so that's where I'll put that baseline. Like if you don't do that is something true. quite right. You do have to mess around with magnets, though, and I do remember having trouble with magnets just, just because, because they... I would, I would try to set them into glue, and I had to specifically do it one at a time because when I tried to do multiple, they would, like, pull together. And pull out of their <laughs> sockets. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, one at a time. Got it. <laughs> What's the prison? Uh, I'm we'll looking get, at the chat. We'll get we'll get to that. I think it's on my list somewhere. I have to get to it. Yeah. There are there are blasters on this list that I have not built. So we're gonna have to either guess or throw them into the neither of us have any idea category. Uh, but I didn't want to not include someone just because I didn't actually build, uh, uh, build it myself. <laughs> That's also an interesting one, sir. What one? The oh, the bike. We'll, we'll get, get to, to that, that one later. Uh, for right now, so yep. uh, assembly is not that bad. It's not like the easiest thing in the world, but it's not bad either. It's easier than a Spring Thunder. <laughs> Um, and so I guess moving on to aesthetics, oh, overall, I like the aesthetics. My only complaint as, uh, about the aesthetics would be the weird grip, but I also understand why the grip is weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, we were fully aware of that and we were trying to figure out ways, hence there's some texturing to it. Um, mm -hmm. but even with my big old hands, it's like, okay, I'm starting to feel that there's some girth to this but we really can't get it smaller and still be strong anymore. So, yeah. or even make it bigger to be what, more comfortable. We just figured that would be insane. <laughs> so, yeah. this is what, what we came up with. Um, I think aesthetic wise, it looks all right. We are a little on the blocky side, mm -hmm. which I think it is fine just because the way that you have to add up the space for things. Yeah, it could have been better. It's one of it's only our second blaster, so I definitely yeah. um, do not take it to heart if someone doesn't like the aesthetics, which we yeah. actually have heard. Like um, I would uh, lost your camera. Oh no! no. <laughs> actually, my GoPro is still set on. I'm confused. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. I don't get it. Me either. Right, let me know when you get it back up. Uh, yeah, so like I think the aesthetics are fine. They're not bad. They're not like amazing, but they're fine. Like outside of the, the grip is really my only complaint as far as the aesthetics go. I don't mind blocky. Um, so I mean overall it's you know passing grade. <laughs> uh, and then as far as performance is really where the uh, breaking wind shines because in such a small package you get some really good performance out of it especially when including the sniper barrel uh, that that's really where the breaking wind shines because it's literally a pistol size that you're getting I'm not more into it what it's not as much meant for live streams as much as it is recording yeah the no, i understand more perfected than the windows which is sad so yeah the important Again, the important thing is that they can hear you. Being able to see you is nice, but <laughs> as long as they can still hear you. We will try this camera, maybe. <laughs> um, but yeah, it so I... is trash, but it shall work. <laughs> Whatever works, right? Um, yeah, 
can just see my assembly. My hands are pretty. You're into my face anyway. <laughs> um, so that, like performance for the uh, Breaking Wind, I think is like pretty, pretty much, much perfect, perfect for what you want for like that the pistol size, the Spring Thunder shells giving it a variety of ammo types, and it it's a very very well performing blaster for what it is i it's and i um i'm not sure if i ever told you i did end up fixing the ejection problem with my uh breaking wind that i had so if you like if you watch my review of the breaking wind for the firing demo the shells didn't quite eject all the way so i had to like finagle them out a little bit that was because some super glue had worked its way into the barrel creating extra friction so it didn't eject properly it ejects beautifully now that i cleaned it up so Oh, well, that'll help. Yeah. Yeah, I felt bad about that later. I'm like, oh, that's why I didn't eject. And I did say that in the video, that there are a slight problem. That's why I didn't bring it up as a complaint, because I knew that was a problem with my assembly, which I said in the video that there are certain issues that are my fault because I built it. Um, gotcha. And then, of course, same thing as the Spring Thunder. It's ridiculously fun. And, again, between the sniper barrels, all the other... Barrels, it's a really, really fun blaster. Uh, let's see here. Oh, hey, look, he's back. <laughs> uh, so, what's, what's everybody in the chat, chat thinking for ranking? Because me, personally, I'm definitely leaning, again, somewhere between S and A. Uh, obviously, this is your blaster, so I'm sure you have very hard opinions on your blaster design <laughs> i actually personally believe our blaster is, is if you're going to rank it on secondaries or tertiary so i think it definitely belongs more in a tertiary kind of role because it's a slower fire rate mm -hmm. is what you need it to be whether yeah it's it's perfect so for I... what it is like that's the thing for what it is i think it's perfect if you're looking for if that's something that you want it's perfect. But however, in the middle of a game, you are right. I guess you're right. It is more of a tertiary to where it's like you don't need it all the time, and it is kind of a single shot blaster. You are right about that. I would say, I, I again, I would probably be conservative and put it on the B to A moment, even though it's a okay. blaster. I will, I will, because it's like. You, you'll, you'll see that a lot with me where I want to just rank all the blasters high, but I have to be like, well, eh. Yeah, so I do agree. I do think it probably does lend itself a little bit more towards B just because it is, as uh, June put it, situational. Uh, I, I love the way she said it. It's hella fun and useful, but situational. And I can agree with that. Agree. Um, it, so it's absolutely a high B, though. It's definitely skirting that B to A line. Uh, so. Agreed. Next but up, I'm definitely aware that it's like very dependent. Yeah. Um, but especially with the wars over here in the Pacific Northwest, that we get a lot of the fun, creative YouTubers over here. So yeah. We're like, okay. <laughs> Situational dependent. Like, shoot, <laughs> I know, I right? It's okay. You guys have all the famous people, but we have all the different clubs. <laughs> I'm actually because I'm pretty sure the East Coast has way more Nerf clubs than the West Coast does. I would agree. Um, we've Cause... basically got the auxiliary and the Pacific Northwest Nerf Club, and it's not even that active. Yeah. It's somewhat active. When, okay. When there's wars, it's a lot more active, and Brett does a really good job of managing it. Mm -hmm. um, but, man, Arrow had air seal issues, but I super glued it in there. Trip, the Spring Thunder is not going any lower than an A because I say so. <laughs> That'll probably be the one blaster that isn't going to match the rest of the rankings. Because uh, <laughs> I will not allow the Spring Thunder to go lower than an A. <laughs> and I'm sticking to that one. Yeah. Well, but as far as nerf groups go, I've got five within a three-hour drive of me. If I include my own group. And that's just... That's crazy. Yeah, and that's just on the northeast side. We're not even including the southern, the southeast. So, uh, so next up, we have the Foxfire 
And I didn't include all the variations because the whole Foxfire itself is meant to be a modular system. So it's all variations off of the same system. So it didn't make uh, sense to include uh, uh, to make different sections when it's, you know. Box. Yeah, Fire. like he just recently came. Jog my. The Foxfire is the modular that system one. to where okay. you have dual stage, single stage, but you also have full length, half length, middles, and then the rear you have semi, full auto, and then he just recently came out with a solenoid uh, rear. So it, it's an. That's really nifty. It's an um, incredibly nifty system. Does anybody in the chat have experience building it that they can speak about? Um, I have. <laughs> I built the Foxfire. I built the Foxfire way back, like when it first came out. I built it. I had not built so at the time. I only built the semi-auto with the full length and the half length middle, and then I also built a single stage and a dual stage front. Um, it's uh, at the time. I, I will say the the fitting the pieces together and getting everything to uh, fit together is a little clunky, but it's a good system. Like it's it's inc it's an incredibly modular design. So let me start with uh, uh, ease of printing. For at least from my experience, way back when he's improved it a lot. I know since then. Uh, oh yes, and select fire, of course. He he's got the the solenoid version has the select fire uh, setting. So there is that as well. So very That's very fun. many options for that. It's and it's not a hard blaster to print. Mostly because it's a very blocky blaster, and he's done a lot to improve the aesthetics of it. Um, it it's it, it's not a hard blaster to print. Like it does require supports, from what I remember, and even looking at the other one, I can guess that it probably needs supports. Um, assembly, it's it fits together like a normal blaster. It splits in half just like a normal blaster would, just like any Nerf blaster. So assembly is not hard. It's just wiring up a blaster. So if you don't, I, I'm not going to make uh, assembly a more difficulty just because it requires soldering. Because I think that soldering is really a skill that you want to acquire getting into this hobby. And I really think that you should, if you're in this hobby, you should learn how to solder. I'm not saying you're not in this hobby if you don't know how to solder. I'm just saying you should learn how to solder if you're in this hobby. It's an incredibly useful skill that I've actually used outside of this hobby as well for minor, for minor electrical projects that I've had to do. Um, and, and yeah, it's really not that hard. It just takes practice. Um, as far as aesthetics go, uh, Broken Disturbance, watching the stream, we spent a very long time on the first two blasters, mostly because it was the Spring Thunder and the Breaking Wind. I'm going to try to not spend as much time <laughs> with all the other blasters. So I'm going to try. It's, it seems like I'm picking up pace. It's because I don't want to spend half an hour <laughs> every two blasters. <laughs> we'll be here all night. We have 60 blasters to get through. <laughs> uh, as far as aesthetics go, it is rather blocky uh, because of the modular design. But it doesn't look bad. Uh, is I... Same as the Breaking Wind, really. It's got, except it has a better comfortable handle. No offense. <laughs> Do you have any thoughts on the uh, Foxfire, Quinn? I would say the aesthetics would probably be the biggest downfall from what I can see. But otherwise, it seems extremely functional. I don't know where it could be. I don't know. A lot of people like the Bolter design, too, so that might even be a pro for aesthetic as well Very for true. some people. Um I mean, with his versatility of what it could do, do you know what? Um, I mean, if it's so versatile, people could even branch this in different types of stages or dual stages because it's modular. I mean, so yeah, I, I should be good. I haven't. It, it, as far as I, I haven't seen any brushless versions yet, as far as like the flywheels go. Uh, as far as I know, it's still all brush motors for the design. Mm -hmm. I'm going to grab some water real quick. Pardon me. You say it's... You can keep talking. You're in my ears, Quinn. So I can keep hearing you. I would say A, maybe. Just because it's so versatile. It... Let's see what the chat thinks. <laughs> so for everyone, for the 
for the Foxfire. It's a very modular system that can literally that pretty much do anything you want it to do. Uh, like it doesn't have any versatility when it comes to ammo types, but it performs whatever it is you need it to. So I'm just curious what the chat thinks as far as where they think the Fox Star ranks. Because, I mean, for me, I, I'm leaning solid A. Like, I... I, uh, I don't know. I think it's a versatile primary that's basically replacing the strike if you can't get Yes. I can so agree I think that. that would I think that would be an A. Because it doesn't sound like it's harder to mob than a stripe, and there's a lot of easy support for it. Oh, the internals are all... For as far as the flywheel cage, the flywheel cage is all uh, strife measurements. So if it, if a flywheel cage that fits in the strife, it'll fit in the uh, Foxfire because they're all. Uh, he wanted to make it as modular as possible, so he decided to fit flywheel cages. Although I'm seeing a lot of B from the chat. I wonder if that's purely is that purely aesthetic or. Well, their it's comments are saying to... saying that it doesn't really stick out. Aside from the modularity. The modularity is the big selling point. But aside from that, there's nothing really too special about it. But, like, that's the hard thing about it because, it's like, it's hard to, like, really uh, bring it down. That's, that. that's why I've been leaning towards A because it's, like, it can do whatever it is you want it to do FPS-wise. Like, literally, if I wanted to go to these different groups, I could literally go... Um, I, got, I mean, I get, if I was going to a... HVZ, I could probably run full lengths at 120 FPS, uh, go down to half lengths at 150 FPS for Southern Maryland for Maryland Air Freighters, break out a dual stage cage, and uh, and go go with that. And then if I wanted to go up to uh, New Jersey and play with them, I could throw in like dual daybreaks or something. It's it's that's interesting. Adam, uh, Adam says it's a less popular Griffin. That is an interesting statement. But I need to make a decision. I, I'm still leaning towards A. What do you What do you think, Quinn? I'm borderline between B and A, so I think it could go in either. I, I'm going to put it in A for now. If I change my mind, we'll uh, go from there. Uh, you know, I'm going to try oh, to stick with blasters. Blast. I'm going to try to stick with blasters that I've personally built. So we'll get to the ones that I haven't built uh, in the future. So if you see me scooting stuff around, it's because I want to prioritize blasters that I've personally uh, assembled. Because uh, I, I, when we get to ones that I haven't built, it's going to be a lot of guessing, you know? Oh, because we built be... a leopard, so we can move that one up. Ooh, sweet, 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 sweet. So yeah, I'll, I'll move that one. Ah, my mail. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I got a notification. My mail's just like, oh, you want to open your mail? No. All right, so, so if you, you want to talk, talk about, about here, I'll, I'll get, get to the, the Lepus, Lepus at the end of the stuff I haven't done. Let's put that here for right now. Here, I'll move that down here for now. Uh, let's see. Have you built a grass snake? No. Okay. <laughs> How about, uh, you know what? What, what, what am, am I doing? doing? I, why, why am, am I delaying this so long? I'm going to bring up the caliber and all of its, its equivalents next. next. And we're going to go with caliber. I don't know. I should have started with the caliber. If you're wondering about all these pictures you guys are seeing, it's most of them I grabbed off of, or all the ones I hadn't built, I just grabbed off the internet. Uh, but I, I, tried I tried to grab, grab as many of my own blasters, blasters as I could. Oh, dear. Nope, 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 nope. <laughs> nope. Uh, so you let hey, me push. I'm, uh, <laughs> there's a certain somebody who's about to leave the chat and working on his blaster currently. Oh, oh yeah? yeah. <laughs> Who, who am I looking at? Oh, Adrian! See, Adrian? It's fun having you. I'm sorry we didn't get to any of your blasters yet. Uh, it is 60 blasters that I need to start really speeding through. Once we get to the guessing round, it'll probably go a lot faster. So, alright, let me go. Caliburn. Alright. Extremely easy to print. Literally, there's no, no supports needed. It, it's I it literally it's usually everyone's first blaster. It's very easy to assemble. And obviously, I think it's, it's easy to build. It's hard to tune super well. Like so, brass to high performance barrels. Like that's where it starts giving F tier garbage blaster. So what? 
<laughs> I <laughs> I'm definitely thinking probably S tier just because of availability to everybody. Yeah, it's it was almost always hard. It's very, I, yeah, I, I don't, it's, it's not often ever kids. The only thing I think that it suffers in is aesthetics. But there's a lot of aesthetic kits for it that improve. That's just me personally. I'm not a huge fan of uh, the base caliber and look. But again, there's a whole bunch, whole bunch of aesthetic kits you can throw at it to make it look really nice. Like uh, Tyler has an amazing caliber. It's, 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 yeah, Tyler Wright, he's in the chat right now. He has an absolutely gorgeous caliber. With, with Mistress Key. <laughs> it's, it's absolutely beautiful. So, yeah, no, Caliburn really has to go in S tier. It is pretty much the beginning of 3D printed blasters. Like, I don't think there was a 3D printed blaster before it that had as big of an impact as the Caliburn did. Uh, next up, I've got the Talon Claw. Pretty much everything you can say about the caliber, and you can pretty much say about the talent claw as well, except it's in a smaller, smaller package. It's still easy to print. It's still easy to assemble. The uh, the V4 kit I had a little trouble with, and the folding stock, uh, uh, collapsible stock, I've had issues with it. Um, see, the flexing and the the flexing for the caliber all depends on what kit you get in it like it, uh if you get the, like the doom shroud or something oh, like that actually that? covers it there are easy ways to fix the uh flexing and, and the, the breaking, breaking i feel like it's just as fragile as any it's no more fragile than any other 3d planet blaster out there the only thing that makes it like slightly more fragile is just the fact that it's heavy oh well we're not uh trip We'll get to the Mega Burn and the Rival Burn as well. We're strictly looking at the base caliber. Uh, I have the Mega Burn and the Rival Burn as their own thing. I also have the U Burn on here as well, just because I think they deserve their own thing. But I'm still gonna, I'm still leaning towards S tier with Talon Claw, just because it's another one that's that the community really like. What do you see the most of in events nowadays? Still see a lot of Caliburns, and I see a bunch of Talon Claws. Yeah. Talon Claws really took off, especially with the higher FPS, like, like more uh, competitive, competitive games. Alright, next, next up, up I yeah, have... Can you see my video? Uh, oh, yes, very fancy. That is a very fancy caliber that I personally would hate to use. <laughs> oh, man. Dying. Very shiny. Yeah, I have uh, my friend Ben down in Southern Maryland made a. Uh, that's the uh, uh, 100, the Caliburn 100 or something like that design. Yeah, with a, with a lot of edits, so it's not as that's good. Because like the other one, like I like, I like it, it, but like it's, it's really, really only good, good as a little piece. It is not good. <laughs> oh, he changed the practicality, added his own logic, so it's all Neo Pixels too. <laughs> They're individually addressable, and it has an ammo counter in it. That's one of Josh's builds. Yeah, no, I agree. Talonclaw and uh, Caliburn are both S tier. Uh, next up, I have the second degree burn. Oh, man. I'd this want to build one of those, to be honest. It's so big. <laughs> and you cannot, like, you can't even do K25 in it. It's too hefty. Your arms will not support for it. I, I'm, not, I'm, not a, I'm not an incredibly weak person. Like, I'm not exactly, like, an incredibly strong one either. I'm just very average. <laughs> and, like, literally, you get a couple shots in, you're done. <laughs> I the When I had mine, I uh, I forget what spring it was, but it was the one that brought it down to under 150. And that was doable. But the uh, dual-stage trigger was also still really finicky. It's, it's still easy to print. It's still fairly easy to assemble. Not as easy as a Caliber or a Talon Claw. It's just, it's 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 fun. It really exceeds in fun, and it does look good. And it's like, eh. Uh, oh jeez, <laughs> Tyler has a second degree mega burn with two Pro Twenty Sixes, <laughs> six, six shots, shots and he's done. done. I'm, I'm surprised, surprised you can make it six shots. shots. 
Um, I personally loved it. It's just, it's not practical. It really excels at being fun, but it's not practical. It's not easy to use. And it's just like, I'm... <clears throat> I'm going to feel bad, but I'm currently thinking C tier. What does everybody else think? What do you think, Quinn? Have you built... You said you haven't built one, right? I haven't built one. I... I did build a K14 normal, mm -hmm. and I could get quite a few primes out of it. Personal ability for any... Well, remember, with the second degree burn, you're priming two at the same time beside, beside each other. It's like... It's the ability it's because everybody it's, it, it, and, it's and it's fun. fun. It's, it's just, just not, not practical, practical at all. Power. And it's... Fair <laughs> gosh, but I heard him. absolutely right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, okay. Apparently, he's done a line... Um, apparently, a lot of people really love the hyper. I, 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 I was okay. Uh, can any, um, uh, Quinn, have you any idea what's going on with all the hyper love? Because I, I don't get it. Not that it's a bad bastard, it's just. I think these people are obsessed with the Hammer Prime last years. We're talking about the hyper right now. Um, I think it looks cool. Um, if his little small four shot revolver version of it would have actually worked out, I probably would have been sold. Yeah. But it's not. Now it's just the single I, shot still only one working. I'm like, I like that with him. I, I just, just don't, don't get, get the point, point of a hammer prime, prime single, single shot blaster. blaster. I don't know. That, that just, just doesn't, doesn't seem cool, to be that it's useful. In size, it's like. The dart zone from Mark II or the Breaking Lander. I got my hands on caps, and it is large, and that's what Josh yeah. was pointing out too. And it's like it's not much smaller than a Breaking Wind. It's not much no. smaller than other yeah. things of that. Yeah, it's it's not. Yeah, it's it, it's not. It's, it's much, much bigger, bigger than, than a Jolt. It's, it's much. It's, it's bigger, bigger than, than a Big Shock. shock. It's, it's pardon me. It's. <sighs> I I I get. I don't know. I. Uh, uh, Hammer priming is fun. I, I agree, and it's really that's true. Adam said it is only twenty five dollars for a full kit, so it's very cheap, very, very cheap. cheap. Uh, the oh, hyper. I'm, I'm sorry. Very valid. Um, twenty five for a full kit. Yeah, let me let me shrink Quinn down a little bit more so you can actually see what's going on. All right, yeah, the hyper is what we're talking about right now. Um, uh, I I. I, I have a personal bias against string power blasters. I just have a heck of a time building them. I, I find, find that they're string power F class. If there was <laughs> my friend built an Esper and I wanted to chuck that thing across the freaking room. I, I feel like uh, there's too much variability when it comes to string power blasters in my opinion. I feel like string power there's too much variability because it has to be the exact yeah. length and like with everybody tying their own knots, it has to be the right thing. Like I had so much trouble when building my flak, which we'll get to, but it's just, just like, like I, I personally, personally just don't, don't think I I'm leaning C tier with the uh, hyper unless anyone wants to change my mind. Which I'm sure I'm gonna take I'm gonna upset a lot of people with that one. <laughs> uh Adam's got a valid point. Um and the and the jolt is super loved. If the hyper was smaller, I would I would definitely agree it could go higher, like where would Jolt would be for preferences. But like, that is true. I still probably stick to a C or B tier, at B at most. Yeah, it's it's. And the hammer looks, game is. I will agree okay. with you though. Aesthetically though, it does look good. Ah, it, yes. It does look good. I, well, well <laughs> oh man, we got to vote for a D on it. It's, it's like, like, and I'll agree. Like I. I don't like the feel of the trigger, either. Like the pulling the trigger is just not comfortable. It's I feel like I'm gonna break the blaster when I pull the trigger. Yeah, but if we put it in D class, how are we gonna get the whisper any lower? <laughs> I have I'm not, not built the, the whisper, whisper, so we have to. Actually, is the whisper on my list? It's right next. It's the next one. Oh, the whisper! No, you don't like the whisper. No, not oh. at all. I've talked multiple times. All right, well, not I think... <laughs> That's right. Oh, man. That makes me sad because I did love The Whisper. I'm not going to defend it, but I did love The Whisper. <laughs> That's, That's right. right. Oh, man. 
I, it, was it was easier, easier to, to assemble, assemble than the hyper, hyper though. I'll, I'll say that. that. It, it was, was much easier, easier to assemble than the hyper. I didn't get the process of assembling them because I shot them at caps. I could experience that. <laughs> um, the trigger but... is not consistent. I'll agree with you there. For the most part, yeah. No, I, I can... can... Yeah. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. He's um Trip has a good point. The hyper completely removed the need for the whisper at all. Like the whisper is completely pointless. pointless. There's, There's no reason to get a whisper, whisper when you could get, get a hyper, hyper. Which, which a hyper, hyper is, is much easier to holster. Like, like you, you can't, can't holster, holster a whisper. whisper. My my one thought was to put like a hook on my belt and like I put the whisper on a hook. But no, I I agree with you. The whisper is a D tier. Your audio cut out? Oh, it did? I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. It must have been on... Uh, oh, no. It might have been on my end. It's not even stream, so... Um, I mean, I don't... Wait, hold on. Was the Whisper before the Esper? No. Was the... Whisper was after Esper. Okay, because Troop was saying it was the first of its kind. I mean, I, I guess, guess it's the first... first stringer... Secondary. It's the first... Um, of that catch style. Yeah. So... Yeah. So, but no, I agree with you. I can't save it from a T, uh, from a D. Um, next up, I guess we'll just continue with slug. I'm going to grab the flak. Uh, now I didn't do, unlike with the caliber and I didn't put all the different, uh, attachments, but honestly, now I think about it, I probably should have. Um, so for the flak, it caps out, I think max, it is another stringer. So the stringing, the stringer, so obviously much more finicky. It is still easy to print. Anything in Captain Slug is easy to print. Like anything time we talk about Captain Slug, it's like it, it's going to be easy to print with Captain Slug because he designs his to be easy to print. Um, aesthetically, uh, it's not great aesthetically. It, it's 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 really not great aesthetically. Uh, the priming on it is at least caps was not great. Um, oh really? It it was felt super stiff. Mm. It's what were the wall comps? I, I think, think it would take pride. I I'll agree with you. Well, Walcom had a uh, problem with his over priming and it would get stuck. It there are there are again it's a stringer. I almost would have preferred it as a uh, springer. If he could have figured that one out, <laughs> I don't know how he would have, but like stringers are just inherently worse than springers. It's just a fact. I will always take a spring over a piece of elastic. It's just, I, I don't like messing with strings. I love the flat. Like, I don't know what the benefit would be. It's quieter, I think, is like the thing with springers. It's supposed to be quieter. Oh, whisper. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, it's. I like his modularity. I mean, it can't do mega, but it can do rival. He has an attachment for a bunch of shell ejecting stuff. It's. It's. I would uh, say it's probably C. It's functional. It was, has use cases. I was floating, floating between B and C. Is, is what I was floating between. between. Uh, let's, let's see what the, the chat, chat says as far as where I got a couple Bs. Um, I got Tyler saying it's a C. Um, prim oh, I agree with you that. I was in pr priming elastic. It do it does. Um, priming elastic bands is smoother than a spring, but getting uh getting str uh elastic to catch is the problem. With every stringer blaster I've ever had to deal with, it always comes down to that catch mechanism, and they're always not great. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I don't, I'd love to put it in B, but I think you're right. I think it's a C. All right. Oh, uh, here, while we're at it, let me grab the Whisper. Have you built a Whisper? Not a Whisper, an Esper. I have built an Esper, and never, ever will I again. <laughs> the the Whisper, uh, the, es the only reason I'm doing the Esper now is because we're talking about Captain Slug, so I figured I should get all the Captain Slug stuff out of the way. <laughs> I just... June, I will absolutely give Bow Arms a chance, at least. 
So I was yeah, just the, it, chant. it bends when you try to like even with a tight assembly, like um, the rod going across. I, I ended up getting some backer rod basically and mm-hmm. redoing a support so it won't like collapse on itself. Um, I did not a fan. In comparison to the flak, how does it stand? Because for one, the Esper is not as modular. You only get half darts with the Esper. Is it a better prime than the flak? I, I would say it's probably a smoother prime if you can actually get it to catch properly. <laughs> Do you think it's on the same level as a flak, or should it be in a lower level than the flak? Because like at this point, I can only go based off of the flak. I would say my personal experience with it could be dependent on issues that someone else's prints too. So I'd probably give it a C just because I'm, I'm this. The trip also um, brings so up I'm... a good point. It is the, the Esper was the first 3d printed stringer. Yes. Uh, so there's a lot of, and it is also very cheap. I'm willing to put it in C tier. If, if you, you think, think it deserves C. C. I, I would give it C. Okay. Um, I know a lot of people have had good luck and liked their espers, so I will... I've I will known two people it. to attempt to build an esper. I have yet to see an esper at any of the games. <laughs> oh. And I think that says something. You can tell how good of a blaster it is by how often you see it pop up at a game. Because everything that I did, all of our categories, the ease of printing, the assembly, the aesthetics, and performance and how fun it is, those are big five factors for whether or not you're going to see it at a game. And yeah, I mean, if the performance is off the charts, but it's annoying as heck, you might still see one or two, such as this thing. Hey, we'll, we'll get, get to the Argus. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. That's on the list on um, here somewhere. <laughs> the, the Chimera is, too. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, next up, uh, let me grab another Captain Slug one. Um. <sighs> I'm gonna I'm gonna grab both of these while I'm at it just because I think one is definitely better than the other. Uh, we've got the rival burn and the new uh, the rival burn and then the rival U, uh, which is the new design bike slug that, in my opinion, looks amazing with the shotgun grip. That's probably the best looking U channel uh, version he has of any of his blasters. Is the oh. new rival burn the inline rival one? Yes, the inline rival. That one looks yeah. amazing. It's still a rival blaster I got it first springer. In rival burn. And uh, to be honest, I hated it, and its print quality was terrible. Mm. Um, and then I saw that come out. I'm like, I should have just printed my own from the get go, and and just that thing looks so much nicer, the inline <laughs> one, and more functional. Like, the issue with the rival one, the form factor of the standard one just kind of went out the door. Max yeah. was like, okay. And then it was so high powered, it was inaccurate because of Yeah. Um, like, yeah. I, I, I would be absolutely willing to give the the inline marble burn, I'd be more than willing to give that one an A because it looks amazing. And I'm not going to like go into rival performance because rival performance has its place. While I personally don't think that a rival Springer is all that useful, unless you're going with a shotgun blast. Um, if you like Springers, I could, uh, and if you like Springer rivals, I could see it being a very good choice. That's just a little a... lower spring. It can be very accurate. And that's where, um, like if you dropped a seven, eight, eight in that thing, it'd probably be buttery smooth and easy and somewhat compact if you wanted to just have because i know rival like kind of peaks at 120 right as far as yeah. fps yeah like you really don't want rival going more than 120 because then at that point you just lose all accuracy it, like my 18 kilogram chronos <laughs> but like it still has its uses though like that's the thing when i'm talking about performance i'm not saying like it has to hit 200 fps if it's a really good low fps 3D Planet Blaster, I can still give it an A or an S. But, like, I'm leaning towards... Honestly, I'm leaning towards A and S with this thing because it is a really nice blaster, and I've seen a lot of love for it from the community. i definitely give it an A. Now, I wouldn't go S just because... It's a limited use case, but yeah. I, would say, I would say A. Okay. 
Um, the original rival burn, I'm leaning towards a C. It doesn't. I agree look with. Good. <laughs> it doesn't look good in my opinion, and it's just like I don't know. It's just uh, I don't like the original rival burn. I, I've I've had to build one, and oh my word, that thing was such a pain. I just didn't like anything about it. I I am more than happy to give the OG a C because <laughs> I just did not like anything about it. See how many people I piss off in the chat with that one. <laughs> Uh, I am half inclined. I would probably go B. You think B? B. Uh, is, um, your, is your breaking wing getting a little lonely? <laughs> As the only blaster in B tier? <laughs> <laughs> right, I definitely I'll... would rank it lower than the breaking wing, so I guess... Um, just, I'm just going to ask your opinion real quick. I've seen a lot of, uh, a, a few complaints in the chat about how and when we're looking at C tier, the, uh, the, the second, second degree burn is really a lot worse than anything else in the C tier. Oh, we could probably drop it down. Yeah. I was like, it's impractical. Thing. It's there, so yeah. impractical. I love it, but it is very impractical. All right. Let me grab another, uh, we got the mega burn. I mean, the Mega Burn for what it is, I've, I've got a Mega U-Burn that's hitting uh, 165. So it can get up there, and that thing hits hard. <laughs> if you can use AccuTake Megas, it's probably somewhat accurate as well. It is, although I I actually prefer Official Nerf Mega because I find they chamber better than the uh, AccuFake ones. So I'm well, thinking... I'm thinking of putting both the Megas into uh, B tier. They have their uses and they are fun. Like if you're playing at 150 FPS, or like I think the max you can go up to them is probably 150 FPS. And I have a love. Um, <laughs> apparently, I bruised somebody's leg with a Mega Dart <laughs> out of the uh, Mega U burn I was using. <laughs> Only um, a bruise. They wasn't going fast enough. Then. <laughs> Um. Yeah, like so, like with Meg, with Mega, I I love Mega. So like that that is a personal bias of mine. I do love Mega, and I will admit to that. Um, oh jeez, apparently somebody got up to two hundred FPS with a Mega Burn. That sounds insane. Because here's the thing, a Mega Dart traveling at two hundred FPS is a lot worse than a Half Dart traveling at two hundred FPS. Those are big differences. <laughs> I, I fully understand why certain groups have different FPS limits for different caliber uh, projectiles. I've got a Mega Dart to go over 100 yards. Does that count? Nice. Um, it was kind of a cannon, but... <laughs> so I'm, I'm thinking B tier for both, both Mega Burns. I, I think, think they, they do... do... I mean, I can be persuaded to go up to A, but I'm personally leaning towards B. B. I think it's more use case, but it's I again, it's situational to whether or not Mega is even useful. It's I, I, there's a lot of groups to where Mega is useful, uh, but th tell yourself this: How many Mega burns do you usually see on the field? At most yeah. one. <laughs> I see maybe one on the say, field. It's killer for those shield busters, though. Yes. If you really want to. And this is what we're talking about with situational. But, like, do you need to carry a mega... That's for, like, long range taking out shields. Like, I would say if you have a bunch of shields on the field, a mega burn would be incredibly useful. But if you've only got, like, one or two shield users, you could run a breaking wind and be fine. Oh, yeah. And you could just holster the breaking wind. Because, like, you don't need to run a completely different primary. So that's why I lean toward towards. Yeah. Uh, 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 let me grab. So I like. I'm comfortable with leaving them both in B. Are you fine with leaving them both in B? Not good to me. <laughs> See, trip. I disagree. I don't think the rival burn is a B. I think the the rival burn does not perform, perform as, as well as, as far as, as the whole, whole functionality, functionality of it and, and uh, between, between the priming, the firing, the firing and everything. I feel like the Mega Burn is a much better blaster in terms of overall performance. I do not see them as uh, 
equals. Uh, next up, let me grab the Talon Claw U. Have you built a Talon Claw U? No, but I've handled caps. Okay. Um, my issue with that one is grab ton of friction on priming. Yeah. Um, like almost impossible to prime. Now, granted, there's probably just issues and people have to tweak. I heard so a lot of people. I do see those ones often, so it may, it's probably not an issue. Has anybody else in the chat? Had uh, I know up in the uh, uh, New Jersey, New York area that I play with, there's Talon Claws everywhere and Talon Claw U's. Although what I see more than Talon Claw U's is Talon Claw U bullpups, which I, which I will get to next. Uh, I personally, if I had to decide between a Talon Claw U and a Talon Claw, I'd go with a regular Talon Claw over Talon Claw U, specifically for aesthetics, because I think the U channels look worse on a blaster. And I don't think that the threaded rods on the Caliburns are a pain to deal with. Like, so I know I'm the design, I know I'm the uh, person who took the Spring Thunder and put a, a U channel on it, but immediately covered it up with a shroud. <laughs> but that was because the threaded rods on the Spring Thunder are the worst. <laughs> the threaded rods yeah. on the Caliburn and Talon Claws, those are very easy to deal with. I'm fine with putting it in A tier. I think probably most of Talon Claws belong there. Oh, at least the U versions. I don't know yeah. about the Bullpup. That situation, my preference is not for the Bullpup. I'm um, agreeing with you. I I love, like, the one I have here is actually my Talon Claw U Bullpup. I love it. It still looks worse than a normal Talon Claw. But it is Bullpup. See, but, like, Bullpup, bullpup, bullpup is not bullpup a thing that's, like... like what was that? <laughs> Hey, if you go bullpup at this point, it's just links. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to that. Like, We're getting there. We're getting there. S tier. Um, <laughs> we will. We will get there when we get there. <laughs> we are working through Captain Slug right time. now. <laughs> uh, Talon Call U, pretty much same things as uh, bullpup. The same thing as Talon Call U. It's a good blaster. I love my Talon Call U Wolfpup. It's currently my highest FPS blaster right now. Well, if you don't include my HPA blasters, it's my highest F FPS one. It's just as easy as all the other Caliburns. It's it's the U channel versions of the Caliburn family are definitely not as easy to assemble or take apart as the normal threaded rider versions of themselves. So like I definitely feel like the best versions of the U channel family are only going to get A tier. Because I think they're just slightly worse in a lot of ways, except for stability. Stability is where the U channel shines the most because it is more stable and you don't get that same flex that you do with calibers. If you're, it's, uh, even when you do like a Doom Shroud or something, there is that still a tiny little bit of flex and the U channel fixes it, but you sacrifice a lot in aesthetics, in my opinion. So, like, I don't necessarily uh, think that the U channel was, like, a step down or a step up. I think it was just a step to the side. <laughs> yeah. That's also true. It gives, it gives some of the options for who prefer the aesthetics of the bolt, but, but my personal are not with that aesthetic. Yeah. Yeah. So, I yeah. cannot rank it lower because that, that would just be <laughs> personal. Like, I would lean towards S with the Talon Claw U bullpup. I, I really would. I, I'm, I'm reading the chat. Hmm. Like I, I would lean that way, and there are some good, there are some really good looking talent called you bullpups. I, I just don't think it necessarily. Uh, uh, the the chat I mean, seems to be leaning towards S. Do you have a reason for it to not be an S? Yeah, because links exist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's 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 funny. <laughs> I don't even. Have have one yet but i shot ball comes and it was uh, i mean i can't really argue with that one <laughs> um that's why I, I definitely think it belongs in a uh, just in general because there has been better blasters and mm -hmm. most easier and more stable with similar structural strength Got that it. have come out so okay well if we change our mind later, we can change our mind. i don't think the bullpup talent claw is on par with the links 
and I don't think that they could go in the same ones. So. I can I, I, I can agree with that. I was going to I was literally going to make a video comparing the Talent Claw U bullpup to the links. But I'm just like, there's nothing that the Talent Claw U bullpup does that isn't better in the links. Except for the fact that it's more comfortable for me, but like that's just a matter of extending the link stock. Yeah. So, so it's like an extra that's place. why I ended up not doing the video because I'm just like, uh, it's really <laughs> it just would be unfair to the clown call you bullpup, which I do love. It's it's one of my favorite blasters that I own. Uh, oh, so moving on to another U channel one is the Y Hopper Caliburn. This one, do you know anything about this one? Because I I, I love the idea behind it, but I've never actually seen one. So this actually technically breaks the rules. I will I will. Let me just say that this one, actually, this blaster right here, is actually technically breaking the rules because I've actually never seen anyone else build this blaster. <laughs> I've not I seen did... one at a war, but like I said, I've seen one at caps, and that's probably not a fair assumption. The I've one, the uh, Y Hopper one. Look on, because I get sent everything. Yeah, hmm. um, and it has a cool little iris on top, so you spin it open and kind of like domes open. Nifty. Um, it's just an inline mag one. I mean. It's no different than if you're going to do a Y hopper on a rainbow pistol. Um, in fact, I'd probably make the rainbow pistol slightly higher. Oh, really? Uh, I don't know. Just because it seems like it's more compact, it's a little faster to cycle with this thing. I don't know. Bolt pump, I mean, pump action is also super fast to cycle. Probably a little more stable on the Caliburn platform. Um,. Yeah, uh, it's uh, it's hard to say. I don't know if I could officially it's... drink that because I haven't run it in a war either. Although I can't say that about most of the pistols I've made recently because uh, yeah. COVID. <laughs> yeah. Let's see the why. Y... Working on Thunder Current. Like for the Y Hopper, I get the idea behind it. I like the idea behind it. It's That's great. Right for somebody who doesn't have any mags or wants to scavenge, it could be a very good option. Uh, I'm I'm thinking B tier is where I'm leaning. I again, I think it's a very situational one to where I think it's good at what it does. Um I'm having a hard time justifying it any higher though, unless the stream wants to change my say mind. Was, I'd say B tier. Uh, it, it's personal preference over anything. Yeah. So we'll probably have people disagree with us, but uh, yeah. I mean, I'm sure they will. <laughs> they've they've disagreed with us a lot so far. So I mean, how is this any different? <laughs> oh man. Tomorrow, I'm hoping on filming a video comparing. The oh, that'll be fun. I'll ex I'm excited to see that. The Echo oh, so the going off of the Y, going off the Y Hopper. We have the Piranha. It's a very... Piranha White Hopper or standard Piranha? Uh, well, I have both of them on the list. Uh... Um, I think you could stick the Piranha White Hopper and be tiered or... Uh, see. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, like, I, I think it's like a very... It like it's a very gimmicky Piranha. blaster. Like, I... It's something that I was just like, I could, I could get behind the idea... I have no idea how practical the piranha is. As far as uh, like, I'm like, uh... I primed one once and it wasn't great. And I know it was an early model. So yeah, like, it's not fair to the new model. But uh, like, I haven't really updated. seen much about it. Like, I don't even hear about the piranha at all. Again, like it, I, I think it's just a very gimmicky blaster that... Again, none of the bla in my opinion so far, none of the blasters on this list are bad. Um, you can say what you like about the Whisper and the uh, Second Degree Burn, but I think they all were fun. I don't think I have never run across one that on this list that I thought was this is a bad blaster. It's just uh... well, here's the thing. So June's saying dual wieldable, but pretty much like in talking to both Barrett and Captain Slug, because I mentioned the same thing to both of them. They both said, not really, no. It's but not dual wieldable. Like, if it was dual wieldable, that would change everything. If you could run a piranha on either side, that would be amazing. But from what I've heard is, that's not great. It doesn't really 
work. Uh, yeah, Ben, stop spamming. Trip does have uh, admin, and he will put you in timeout. Uh, yeah. At best, C. C. I would say C for both. Both, to be honest. Okay. I think it's because it's the gimmicky priming mech. Um, if it has been improved, I apologize, and I will take it back. Yeah. But I definitely say C or D. Yeah. Yeah. I, and again, we get to. That's a nice thing. Like, hopefully, mean you can do this every year, but hopefully, it'll be less blasters in the future. <laughs> Uh, uh, so let's see. So I'll just grab what I have here, which is the grass snake. You said you haven't built a grass snake? Correct. Okay. Is that the double D uh, design one? No, he had a different one. I forgot about that one, actually. Is that one officially out now? Yeah, okay. I think it is. Okay. I was able to get the files. I just hadn't started or okay. thought about it yet. Well, I'll, I'll say, say this right now. As far as like blasters I built... This is the easiest flywheel pistol build I've ever done. I really? loved it. Yes. The grass snake is absolutely fantastic as a secondary. Like I I I really really love it. It's it's <laughs> We just won't go into the fact that I sold it. <laughs> <laughs> but that's just you sold it. I did, but that's only because I wasn't using it because I run an FDL as a secondary. <laughs> oh. Well, I guess if you have an FDL, it's fine. Right? Oh, like, it's, it's awesome. just like, uh... uh. But no, the Grass Snake is really. Trip says it's a C tier blaster. That is interesting because I still find, as far as secondaries go, it's. As far as a flywheel. If you're going to get a flywheel secondary, it's the best. Because, uh, like, I mean, the pigeon, like, we'll get to the pigeon later. It's I will always choose a grass snake over a pigeon, especially if I have to uh, put it together myself. If I have to put that together myself, grass snake 100% better than the uh, pigeon. Despite the pigeon looking better and being cooler, I think that the gimmicks of the desert pigeon – hold it back from being better than the grass snake. The simplicity of the grass snake puts its performance above the pigeon. I have very I, hard I would agree. <laughs> and also the difficulty of the pigeon itself. Yeah. Um, but like, went off on a little tangent there. So for like the grass snake itself, it's super easy to print. It's really easy to put together. Its aesthetics are boxy. That's that's the biggest thing. It's 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 it's, it's a, a box, box. <laughs> and I, there's no getting around that. But it performs well. Like it's a very very comfortable trigger pull. I had no problem with it. It's a single pull, just like a lot of other uh, flywheel pistols. It's just. I, I personally would love to put the Grass Snake in an A. For a, a flywheel pistol, I don't think it really gets much more, much better as far as performance. Like, performance-wise, I don't think it gets much better than that. Both pretty consistent, I, I because I haven't done one. And what's the form factor like? like uh, it's, how big? Uh, smaller than a Desert Pigeon, but still pretty wide because it's a grip-fed. Uh, it's got a, a, the mags in the grip. So it's still pretty wide, so it's not the most comfortable. But again, a lot of the items like that are uh, <laughs> really they're really hating on the design of the grass snakes in the chat. <laughs> they really don't. I think it's just because I like boxes. What's the matter? You guys didn't grow up playing Minecraft or something? You don't like boxes? <laughs> boxing. <laughs> oh, boxing and donuts. <laughs> Oh man, um, I I am personally gonna put it in A. You guys can disagree with me as much as you want. I think it deserves to be okay. there because I still think, to date, as far as practicality goes, practicality being most important in this, <laughs> what I'm about to say, it is the most practical flywheel sidearm. That that is what I'll say about the grass snake. And I'm also gonna put the. Night Snake also an A because you get higher performance with a slightly longer shell, but it's still gonna fit in 
any holster you can fit the grass snake in. I think like, the aesthetics of the the longer one looks better. Look the more twig on. snake I'm gonna put in C. It's Bad. tiny. It's tiny. I get what they were going for. They were going for the most compact pistol they could go with. They really made it look worse. <laughs> um, I, I, I think it looks it's... like Trip wishes he could throw you out of your own stream. <laughs> What'd you say? It looks like Trip wants to throw you out of your own stream. <laughs> I can't just put a brick in A. Watch me. <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah, no, the Twig Snake, it's, again, I will still say that there's not any blasters on this list that are bad. I maintain that position, that there's not a single bad blaster on here. There may be blasters that I don't prefer, but there's not a single bad blaster on this list. And this is my list. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah, I knew I was going to hate for that one. <laughs> uh, next I mean, up if we you're have... going to go there, Rock 26 and 27 look ugly, too, but that's my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next up we have the grass snake 2.0 which i'm not gonna lie i think it looks worse than the point one okay. i i i will send in a d-class just for aesthetics yeah i was just like if, if, if it, i'm gonna put it in b just in the middle because it's still uh no i agree with you put it that that the I do not like how that blaster looks. If it performs the regular Twigs uh, Grass Snake, I don't think it you know what the performance is like, how it looks. Taking it from, because you actually set up with the uh, one color, two side panels. Color wise was not a good choice. I, I don't like it. Longs in D, not even in C. If there's something that shows the same, and they fly. Oh man, all right. Um, next up, don't. I personally, like next up, I want to have on here again. I pistol. Um, I know frontline foam sells them. Uh, Why does not... this exist? You didn't know this had existed? Like, I I'm know. probably for good reason. <laughs> again, I don't have anything against the blaster. I just don't get because it's a flight with the world pistol, so I can't imagine that the FPS is that good. I, I am this is this is one that I don't know anything about. Uh, outside of that, it's a rival. Does anybody, anybody in the chat build one or have one? Maybe I'm completely uh, That's what I'm waiting Maybe for. Really now, cool. the chat is always about 20 seconds behind us. Okay, well, we'll wait for people to yell at us. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's like... <laughs> I, but, like, think of it this way. Like, for a flywheel of the world rival pistol i can't imagine the fps is that like at best at absolute best i can't imagine it's better than 90 fps which is still like a stock like that's best like that i'm being optimistic here i i bet you it's probably closer to like set i should look this up <laughs> uh if the mamba anything like a small version of a hero yeah i could actually seeing it be nice the hair that we have that's modded it shoots laser beams, and it's just consistent. And if it right. can, if it can make up for consistencies, mm -hmm. like if you pull the trigger and it shoots a shot, and it's going to place it where you want to within like twenty to five to thirty feet. Yeah, I can see it being justified. So I'm trying to look it up for oh. as far as like performance goes. Yeah, see, I can agree with that. Like, if you like Rival, you'll probably like it. But like. Again, like, you know my opinion on Rival. I think Rival makes excellent shotgun fodder. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of Rival outside of shotgun blasts. Yeah, so it's like, so basically what I'm hearing is, like, it doesn't really have high F it doesn't have high FPS, so it's probably under stock FPS numbers. So you're probably looking closer to 70 FPS, I'm guessing. And you have proprietary mags. Which I don't necessarily mind. I I have my own, I have my own ideology when it comes to your secondary and your primary not using the same system. Like I I think it's a bad idea to have your secondary use the same ammo source as your primary. So if you're that's like that was the thing when I was using my FDL three as a primary, I was running my grass snake as a secondary, and I pulled out my secondary. I'm like, what am I doing? I just took the mag out of my grass snake and put it into my FDL. Because it's like, 
why use your secondary when you can just change the mag? It takes about the same amount of time. Yeah. Um, uh, so it's an interesting blaster. I, say, <sighs> I agree with Trip. If it could be a test your proton pack, that might be interesting. I don't. Um, but I don't think it can. I, I don't see how you're going to be able to attach a. I have not seen it yet. I feel like if it attached to a proton pack, I would have seen something about it. So based off my knowledge, I'm going to put it in D just because I just don't think it's that useful. It's a compact, like, uh, I just don't see it being that useful, especially with Rival. Like, how hard is it to reload a Rival Blaster? Like, Rival doesn't even really make Rival Blasters that take mags anymore. So you just got to top off. Mm. <laughs> June, I haven't played Call of Duty since I was in high school. And I wasn't good at it. <laughs> See, but in a Nerf War, I don't think it matters as much. Like, I don't think that the drawing your secondary, reloading a mag in Nerf is as important as in Real Steel. I, I, I feel like that argument loses a little bit of weight once you bring it to the Nerf War. Again, I, I could be wrong. I don't play as much high intensity like i need to be as streamlined as possible on everything so if it's a um, flywheel or electric blaster i definitely think pulling a secondary that's preloaded is faster or maybe mm. even potentially one of these if it especially if you leave it primed which it cringy to think about but like definitely can see like this one primed closed up pretty safe I'm not going to mm. accidentally trip it the yeah. trigger pull is beefy so yeah. you could keep it Pulling this and you get pop. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that being quick. The trigger guard on flywheel blasters is really important. <laughs> yeah. I as of right now, unless somebody has a reason for me to not put it in D, I'm perfectly fine with just leaving it in D. Um I guess I'll just grab this next sentence here. So next we have the mistress key. Which again enters the weird category of not necessarily being its own blaster. While it can be, as you see in the picture I have, is the handle I printed for it. Uh, it's designed to be a blaster attachment. Uh, so it's... it's. I will also say that I have not printed or assembled one myself, but it uses... <laughs> Enjoy your food, Quinn. <laughs> but don't mind me, I'm going to... <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> our dinners are cooked because of the house we live in and it's 5 30 uh, to 6 30 and i'm like i'm not missing dinner i don't blame you no you're good you're good it's it's uh oh with elites Oof. he, he wants to know what kind of fps mr key can get with an elites see that you would have to check into like the maker key which i don't have the mini key and the maker key are not on this list because I have not seen anybody actually build one yet, outside of the original creator. No. I was actually helping build one. Uh, oh, a mini key? A, uh, not a mini key, a mistress key. Oh, yeah, I was just saying, I got the mistress key on here. I said I don't have the mini key or the meager key on here, because, because I haven't seen mm -hmm. any built, and that was one of the prerequisites. Uh, I mean, we could always just ask June. She might be a little biased. <laughs> she, so. She's in the chat, yeah. <laughs> um it's when uh it, i can't uh, imagine the printing is that like look just looking at it i can't imagine the printing is that difficult i can't imagine assembling it is that difficult either it's it's again similar to a caliber uh as far as performance goes um i know they've done a lot of work to improve performance like i think frontline foam is getting his up to 120 fps now with a mega dart uh, mm. so that is a very significant increase to the original one that I got, which is only hitting around 70 FPS. Um, I'm not sure if yeah. a lot of that has been fixed. I know that was one of Walcom's complaints was that it, for as big as it is, it should be hitting a lot harder, which has to do with, which they're already aware of that, that there's an issue with the, uh, ceiling, which I believe that there, uh, the next, uh, 2.0, I think when that comes out, I think it's going to solve a lot of problems. Um, right. I was there with Walcom and Jose, and we were trying to fix yeah. it. Yeah. Well, a lot of it comes down to the uh, plunger tube itself not being a clean cut. 
that's, that's where you lose a lot of your seal. Uh, but, yeah. like, so, like, yes, that is a bit of a downside. Like, if, if, uh, but yes, it is an incredibly powerful blaster. If it's, if you get a good steal, it's a very powerful, like I said, 120 FPS of the Mega Dart. That's impressive. That's, that's why I'm going off of that. Uh, oh yeah, 1.2, that's what it is. The 1.2 has solved the uh, problem, so it should be, uh, June, can you tell me what the 1.2 is uh, hitting right now with Megas? Because I know Frontline Foam improved the seal and extended the barrel a little bit. So he made it a little bit longer, but I think that's okay if you're going to hit 120. Okay. So, yeah, yeah I, I got, got both creators in here in the chat right now, so. Okay, so the 1.2. <laughs> yeah, I believe that. Um, so... It, it can be, mo it's, it's a very modular blaster and it can go, I mean, for one, it can go on any Picatinny rail or you could throw it on a handle and just run it as a secondary and it's not hard to do it. It's, and you can still fire the trigger with one hand. Um, I think, but I, I do think. Oh, but I have the staff blaster. You got to do the breaking wind mistress key and the proud puppet. <laughs> that's right well i have i have a plan for something so i can't do the same thing welcome did but i have plans to do something similar where i'm stacking blasters on blasters <laughs> um it was ridiculously heavy oh man i i believe it, it looks so much fun i am leaning towards b tier i think it's very similar to the breaking winch where it's situational i think it's slightly less situational than the or more I think it's slightly more useful than the Breaking Wind because you can just throw it on whatever blaster you have. Um, if it wasn't sharp, such a sharp prime down, we were mm -hmm. actually going to make a rail adapter to put the Breaking Wind on the bottoms of blasters. <laughs> that would have been amazing. I mean, what do you think? I, I'm leaning between A and B, but I think I'm landing closer to B. As long as the seal issues have fixed i yeah. would say and it sounds like they have been so yeah i'm still think b yeah um so, June, yeah, i so... think you're right actually the the meeker key could probably be either on par with the breaking window or above just because it's rail mounted um it, it, yeah, yeah so but it's, it's like, like the whole it's just another ecosystem though that's the main downside because then you have to get into the meeker attachment ecosystem whereas if you yeah, like, if you already have, like, if you're running a Spring Thunder, like, the Breaking Wind is a perfect secondary, because you already have all the shells. And reloading the Spring Thunder is not the same as just changing out a mag. Um, all right. Next up, uh, one of my most recent builds is the XC by Foam Knight, which, I, was like, I will say, like, this blaster just released, like, very very new uh cool concepts i got to play with caps but he had some damage issues and he had to reprint he had the parts. he had the alpha that that's, that's a, a big, big difference. difference and he had some parts that were wrong as well apparently he sent out the wrong barrel for the mega which is why it was getting such terrible fps and i actually had to make oh, a that makes more sense now yeah the xc actually hits 130 140 fps with mega which is a huge difference it's <laughs> here's the thing i'm considering like you can almost i don't know if you can because i can't i haven't tested in the field yet you could practically change from firing half lengths to firing mega on the field like you go back to your spawn i don't think you could do it while you're still alive i just don't think you like having to juggle all that i think but if you're walking back to spawn you and like there's somebody out there with a shield like hey we're really having trouble with a shield user you could change it out mid game which i think you could do better than what you could with a mega it's incredibly modular it's a very very nice blaster i love the way it looks it's not hard to print it's more difficult to assemble than a caliber for anybody who was there for that stream 
I I'm not a fan of lock nuts. <laughs> I don't like knock nuts. Um, I'm with Trip on this one. Uh, no, the I, it was kind of rough. Um, when I tried it, I know. Granted, alpha version. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, that's that's, that's the, the prime, prime. I didn't have a problem with at all with uh, mine. Like it fed, like the mega version, the mega uh, when you had the mega magwell in it, it feeds smoother than a mega uh, me, uh, mega burn. Like I, I really liked it. Like <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I agree with you. Like in concept, absolutely a S tier blaster. However, it's very new, and it has a little bit of room to grow. I'm fine with leaving it in A tier uh, because of that. I, I I think aesthetically, I think aesthetically it's better than the Caliburn. Like if you're comparing base Caliburn and base XC, XC is way more aesthetic than the base Caliburn. But again, because like you're comparing the caliber now, which has been out for years and has had so many people building off of it to the XC, which just came out. So, but yes, no, I, I can agree with the uh, doing that. It, it's, it's pretty much an A tier bla- blaster now with the potential of e- with, with very plausible potential of hitting S. Hmm. So, let's see. So, that thing that's what we're... don't do it for me on that blaster for some reason. Really? Um, I think I like sharper angles. Mm. Um, this is about as curvy as I, I kind of like on a blaster. Um, only okay. just because it's so compact. But like the gecko, mm-hmm. like these types of sharp lines and like... Oh yeah, that looks real nice. Front. It's like, I just love that aesthetic. Yeah. No, I, I can agree with that. I can agree with that. Um, so next up we have the... I'm going to call it the FTEC. F-Tech. <laughs> I don't know. F-T-E-C just sounds so much better than F-Tech. Like, I get the theme song for F-Troop stuck in my head whenever someone says F-Tech. Um, for those of you in the chat who are younger, it's a black and white TV show. <laughs> yes, there are still a lot of blasters on this list. I'm trying to get through them. <laughs> The FTEC. I say it's still fairly easy to print. Oh, shots fired. Not that sharp, maybe, but you know, I kind of made one with the breaking wind. So, what? 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 I missed. He's like sharp angles. Oh, like say on a box. <laughs> nice. Um. So the F the FTEC. It's easy to print. It is a pain in the ass to assemble. I will say that because it's a lot of screws and it's pretty much what everyone tells you. Like I did fix the priming issue. The problem was I didn't print the uh, uh, priming rod or the uh, catch at the right uh, orientation. So that messed it up. Uh, So that was my fault. But like, even still the assembly process. Ramrod stuck in the wrong direction. (laughs) I did. That's right. I forgot about that. Oh man. That was fun. Well, yeah, getting the ramrod stuck. So that was the, one part of the stream I was in. He's like, I can't get it <laughs> out. Wait, those backwards. <laughs> oh, that was that was bad. Oh man. <laughs> um, I, I like. Here's, here's the, the thing. thing. I, I love the aesthetics of the FTEC. I love the aesthetics. Uh, and his performance is great. But the prime is very beefy. It's 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 like I I pulled now. Admittedly, he does say that you have to like put a lot of rounds through it. So there's actually a lot of work that goes into assembly. Like you have to put uh, you have to lubricate the rail, not the the uh, priming rods, priming arms, and then just run mags through it like all day to get it to actually prime more smoothly. And yeah, it it I, I actually pulled an arm muscle when I first started messing with it. That's how bad of a prime it was. Um, I think it's hitting 210, 215, which I really want to bring it down to 200. But like, I love the blaster, 
it's great. There's just so much work that goes into it. A lot of work to get it to work properly. Like, I love its performance. I, I, I love how it performs. I love the design. But between the assembly and getting it to where you want it... Uh, uh, yes, Trip, I did try to hammer it out. Which is funny, funny because it also didn't work. <laughs> so I had to <laughs> find another way out. Uh, I didn't even comment it. It's like hashtag camera tap. Yeah. I <laughs> as much as I want to, I don't think I can put it in A. I think it's a solid B. Which makes me a little sad. Like I just because, because of the issues, issues and again, yeah, like they, they made a good point. It is also another blaster that is new. But I I, I think it's a high B. But I don't think it... I think it's B with potential to go higher. Yeah. After improving. Yeah. Much, Much like, like the XC, which was like, it's A with potential, potential to go higher. Yeah. Uh, no, no, I haven't had a chance to lower the spring yet, which is what I want to do. I just haven't had, I had to order a new spring for it, which I haven't done yet. Uh, but the standard spring, I got the spring that come the standard spring, which I think is the higher one. So the spring that you would get if you didn't change any settings is what I'm going off of. Uh, Yeah. yeah. Some of these no, I can agree with kits it. are a lot more expensive to put together than people give credit yes. for. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, this blaster, for instance, is an absolute pain to print yep. and post-process. Yeah. The just... hardware kit that comes with it, though, it is so nice. You just got to pay attention to the assembly process. It mm. is a very, very well put together kit. He did that absolutely well. Super clean cuts, better than any of mine. Two spring options, two barrel options, um, enough for four seven round mags. Uh, Grim, um, uh, Grimdark Kitten makes a good uh, point as well. Uh, she said, "The I do think the continuous support of the designer, the design by the creator, is an important aspect to consider as well." Which I do fully agree with that one. Like, is the community around this blaster still alive? And uh, and can, can if you have an issue, are there people there who can help you fix it? I can agree with that. Uh, mm. Is it is the builder still around to mess with it? Or I haven't heard much of that. From what? Honest. About what? The FTEC? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's... um, I, I, uh, I found him on uh, <laughs> Discord um, and was messaging him about a couple of things. He was in the thing as well it's it's it doesn't have a discord built around it but i don't think i necessarily want a discord for every new blaster that comes out um i do appreciate it for the zinc right now yeah well, well the, the zinc, zinc needs it because no offense to the creator oh, but I, yeah no, no offense to the creator sorry. i i i think that that one was not ready for an open beta i think it should have been a no. close it should have been a closed beta with a handful of people I don't I think, think it was ready. Probably for will still be doing it, but um, <laughs> yes, it is working. Um, with the exception of the mag release, I've got work to do on that. But um, yeah, yeah, it's interesting. Again. I have the K twenty five in here because it's kind of being dark picky. So I was <laughs> like, okay, well, overpower it short barrel. Right. <laughs> Try being dark picky now, <laughs> but it is a beast to prime. If it's hard for me to prime. For yeah. freaking get it for most people. Um, right. No, absolutely. It, it's, it's, I, I can only imagine. Oh, I got it. I don't have that on here. Okay. But I do love its size and I'm loving it and growing on it more. And like, it's worth the tweaking, I think. And I hope he, he's slowly improving parts. He's adjusting yeah. edits um, in the Discord. So that um, is where, where I'm at with the zinc is I have the hardware. And I am currently waiting for the files to go through some rewrites <laughs> and hopefully give it like a month or so. And as long as the hardware hasn't changed, uh, I should be able to print one out and assemble it. I just don't feel like putting that amount of time into it right now. I mean, cause I've At been... one point, he did, he did say if hardware changed, he would replace and give people the hardware that, that's... they needed to. 
that's a plus at least. Because, yeah, because it's like, I'm, I'm just going to wait for things to iron out a little bit more um, and then go from there. <laughs> Yeah, because like I, I love the yeah. idea of having multiple. Anyways, uh, let me get back to the thing so we can actually get through this. I think we're like halfway. <laughs> uh, I went ahead and threw it up here now. Next up, we have the links, which, man, it not only is it easy to print, it's super easy to put together as long as you put the catch in the right way. <laughs> and it functions beautifully. It And there's a very... I have, my only complaint about the links was just that it was too short. That was my only complaint. And while I don't necessarily think that I'm going to use my links as much, just because of, I just find that I prefer different blasters, I, just, I can't bring up a, a good, legit complaint against the links. Like, I... Pretty much everyone's in agreement that the Lynx is S tier, and I can't make a single argument against why it's S tier. Any thoughts, Quinn? <laughs> um, full send for S. I don't. I don't honestly. I can't think of any reason <laughs> not to. Yeah, it's like there's 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 nothing, nothing I can say about the Lynx. <laughs> you know. <sighs> There's just nothing to say about it. Um, it's just, it's an S tier. I... <laughs> oh, I guess there is one thing. A longer stock would be nice. But I'm sure yeah, that's... there is one already out. There, there's there's already one. Say, yeah, either but... by the end of the stream or the time I sneeze, someone will have it on thing version. <laughs> yeah, it's already done. So, like, that, that was an easy one that I was expecting to be like, this is going to be an easy S tier. Uh, next up, I have, I threw these on here for fun, and they are technically available. Uh, there's these little stringer pistols that were designed by Hotcoin and then turned into an actual blaster by Neeker. They're absolutely adorable. <laughs> not practical. They get not great performance. <laughs> but boy, was it fun being part of it, because literally, Hotcoin drew it, Neeker designed it, and I printed it. All within 24 hours. It was the most one of the most fun I had on the uh, Discord community. <laughs> it, it was it... <laughs> they're just cute little pistols. They're they're adorable. Does it perform better than a uh, hyper? Uh, I mean, no. <laughs> um, because the hyper still has a uh, plunger tube system this is just band powered it's a band that you lift up with your there's not even a, 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 yeah, there's a slight trigger if it works correct perfectly again this is like this is not a fine-tuned blaster this was literally like designed and printed within 24 hours so this does not have the manpower behind it uh that a lot all of these other blasters have behind them but i did c for cute <laughs> I was thinking C or D, but yeah, like, oof. Oh, I'm about this. Quinn, keep them entertained for like Still more two minutes. <laughs> give me, a, let, let me, give me to like two minutes. Keep them entertained for me. Me entertaining? Well, I shouldn't show my face on the screen then because people might run. I mean, I guess tomorrow I'm going to be doing a video on these two and uh, compared to the DZP Mark II. I don't know if that's entertaining to people. It won't be a live stream. It'll be an actual video, so hopefully it'll keep it short. Um, um, uh, this thing is a pain in the rear, but it's cool. Uh, I think the reason why the Prime is so bad is actually just because of friction. I've hollowed out these channels quite a bit, but... It's still pretty beefy. Definitely doable, but um, the trigger caused a lot of problems. The catch seems to actually work pretty reliably. Like the, the functional parts, like the release of the plunger head, the catching, and all that stuff actually is pretty well refined. I think it's tolerance issues in sanding and how much support's needed.
Yeah, it's kind of meant at 80, but also it's super consistent between dark types. Like, it's not as dark picky as, like, a lot of these printed ones. Like, I run min guns, and, like, out of the DZP Mark II, um, it works just fine. What's going on? You're too heavy of a front shroud? What front shroud? Chat's confusing. Do you think this would be higher or lower than a DZ, DZP Mark II, regardless of like how to build it or print it? With the Mark II? Really? Um, <clears throat> with the Gecko? It is definitely significantly larger. Um, da -da -da -da, sorry, I struggle with cameras. Um, I love it, though. The aesthetics, it's fun. It actually, the support wasn't bad to clean out. It Primes pretty well, pretty consistent. The mag is super satisfying. He did a great job. This mag I haven't really had sticking issues with, um, with the drum spring. It's one of the first printed mags I haven't had problems with. Um, If I was ever going to build another one again, it'd be a gecko. Just because of how much easier it is, and it still functions really well. This one is really powerful. Like, I'm getting really good performance with the K25 and even a short barrel. Um, the Gecko is still up there. I'm using a 12 kilogram in here, so it could be even a lighter spring if you wanted to at a 9. Um, but Dog Bone uh, pressure, so you can still take your mag in and out while it's closed. Whew. Huge miss. plus for the Gecko. Uh, just talking about the two pistols because I ran out of things to talk about. <laughs> I'm so sorry about that family emergency. I was like, like wow, that, 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 that was unexpected. <laughs> All right. Oh, so boy. that was C for cute. <laughs> um, next up, we have the FDL3, which, like, the FDL3 shines in performance. It's one of the best flywheel primaries out there however you assembling printing i mean printing i don't think is that bad assembling takes a lot of know-how not that it's i don't performance wise i definitely think it's high yeah but the struggle of um, performance and aesthetics knowledge makes yeah. it I, that's the thing. I think if we're just looking at performance and this aesthetics, I'm yeah. Specific of <laughs> but like, I don't think I can put it in S tier because remember guys, we are looking at blasters that the community can build. That is the, what we're looking at. That is how we're ranking it. Well, yes, I have an FDL-3. I love my FDL-3. It is an amazing, amazing blaster. I will say I did not build it myself. It... <laughs> I don't think with the fat... I think the... The community availability as far as... And that's the other thing. It's like... I don't even think you can build one anymore because I'm pretty sure Project FTL is going to be closing up shop in a couple months, and I don't even think they're offering hardware kits anymore. So, I mean, technically speaking, if we're looking at it from a community aspect, it ranks much lower because you can't... 
there's no kits anymore and sourcing your own hardware is a whole lot harder. That, that's, that's tricky. tricky. I'd say it's probably stuck at A. It's balancing between S and B because of so many different factors. Yeah. I don't know. I, so I, I can... Right. I, I can agree with that. I'll, I'll put it in A. Cause like, I don't know if I could put it lower than an A, but at the same time, it's just like that's that's it's a very tricky situation. So I don't think I can give the FCL three S tier. I don't think I can. Um, I think the pain of having to source your own hardware for that is much harder. No, I, Trip, I think it's perfectly acceptable to lower it because of that. Because, you can, again, we're looking at this from a community building aspect. We're not looking at buying them. We're looking at building them ourselves. This is not a rank of buying a blaster off the shelf, because that would change a lot of this list. I think it does require some extra knowledge. I think it's the there's not as much of um they had a temporary solve for the motor availability which they're running out of again i i'm sticking with my a tier like i think it's a perfectly fair assumption to put it in a due to the lack of availability i think the difficulty of building it keeps it from being in s tier if you look at s tier caliber and talent claw links those three of those you can still get hardware pretty readily the Lynx goes out of stock pretty fast, but it comes back in like at least once a month, if not sooner. I'm pretty sure it's sooner, but I think that just takes it a very, very big hit when the hardware is just not as available. So I, I will absolutely stick with my A tier ranking of it. <laughs> Unfortunately, Springers are just easier. That's just the way it goes. Like, unfortunately, not much you can do about that. Um, I would say basic flywheelers are actually easier than most Springers just because of the, what, the variety of hardware into Springers. I mean, that's true. Or the that's... complexity of, like, crash. I guess that's fair. Springs get really annoying. Springs are <laughs> so specific. Specific springs, size of springs, coil of springs, distance, wire gauge, everything. It's just, ah. Uh, spring Thunder is in A tier, uh, in case you're um, wondering, Alan. But <laughs> when you get, yeah, when you get into the, the aspect of brushless is where it gets weird. Yeah. Again, like, I don't think it's necessarily that it's hard. I just think that there's a lot of know-how that goes into it that is not as well accessible in the nerf community as say normal brushed motors or springers i feel like the amount of knowledge that's available is not as much there but I, again i just think that the e well, let's say they were going out of uh like closing up shop like half a year ago too yeah i feel like this is because I, I thought they were closing up shop like last year, and then now they're closing. They up were shop. because they couldn't source Again? motors. Now it's because they both have jobs and their kids are growing up. So, uh, that makes I, sense. I think. I, I again, I from what I see here and there. Anyways, moving on. FDL three is an eight here, and it's staying there. Next up, we had the Tempest, which I actually had built. It was my first HPA blaster that I actually built. And you want to talk about expensive blasters? Those are expensive blasters to get into. There's no, <laughs> there's not like wading in. You jump into HPA, <laughs> and you don't look yeah, back. Yeah, the, the tanks, the valves, the double regulators. I mean, just, yeah, between um, the regulator, the tanks, the hardware, the super core. The Tempest is an HPA uh, blaster using the that uses the super core. It's, it's, I've got to say, it's, it's expensive, but the but hardware it's... is really easy to source. Like I'll give them that. Like it's a pain that you can't just buy a hardware kit. Although I 
think Frontline Foam has a hardware kit for it. It's <laughs> that is the other thing. HP is not as allowed as anything else. In all the groups around me, I am the only one that my the Maryland Earthworkers is the only one in my area that allows HPA because we play on a private field. And I get I'd that. I'd be a trip or tune on this one. It's it's got to be bouncing between B or C. B because of perform. I mean, like you can almost go S for performance, probably. Yeah, like it's but another like, situation like cost yeah. availability, community I think, wise. I don't think the availability is an issue because you can get things. Well, no, I agree. It's probably a similar situation to the FDL. I was about to make an argument, but it's the same argument somebody was making in the chat for the FDL. That's that's a very fair argument. It's aesthetics are okay. I, I'm not a huge fan of the aesthetics. The grip is a little wonky. Um, uh, it's I not... Yeah, I'm dropping it down to C. Yeah, like, it's more I talk about, I'm like, I like it. Again, I like all these blasters. It's just like, mm, yeah, I think I'm going to have to drop it down to C. It there is are, a shame. Oh, man, the ADHD not make it onto this list? I thought for sure I'd grab the ADHD. I guess not. All right, next up we have the bulwark. <laughs> got me in chat, so. <laughs> oh. oh, the bulwark. Such a shame about the bulwark. <laughs> Anyone who got in there is properly working? <laughs> yeah, I was about to say. The rollers and the, the feeding. On oh, the bulwark can't be gotten anymore? Like, the files aren't available? Because, like, I knew there weren't hardware kits, but, like, the bulwark doesn't really need a hardware kit. You just need motors and wire and switches, which can be gotten from out of darts. Yeah. I'm not sure. I didn't know like, it's easy to source the hardware. Like, as far as, like, yes, it's a blaster that's not that doesn't really have a... Oh, he took the bulwark down. Well... I wonder if he's improving it. Maybe. Okay, then I'm going to have to put it in D for now, then. Just because the files aren't available. And, okay. again, this is all about the community building it. So if you can't get the files... This is new to me. Yeah, yeah me too. too. Okay. okay. Then, yeah, no, we're going to we're gonna keep it in D because nobody can get the files. <laughs> Next yeah, I had original talks with him about reselling it. Um, yeah. Because of our experience, like, we probably could have done it. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> looking at how the rollers worked, I was like, no. Yeah. <laughs> it's... It's, it's a, a fun, fun idea, idea that I think needs the whole loading mechanism needed. I don't know. It, it's it's. I want to like the bulwark. I really do. But it's a pain to build. It is such a pain to build. And then if you have to open it back up, it's also it's like even if it was still available, it, I don't. I think it would still have ended up being a C. Yeah, it's gotten decent performance, so yeah. I could see C or B if it was available. And I, I could almost. I don't, I don't like the grip. grip. The grip is a little too blocky, so it's not comfortable, mm, especially, especially where your hand is. Um. So yeah, I, I don't think I could have put it higher than a C. Uh, speaking of which, next up we have the. Um, dang it, I the name Viper. The, the Viper. Is this the Viper? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Magpie is the other one, right? The Viper. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Next up, we had the Viper, which I also had very bad experiences with. Oh God, yeah. So I love this blaster until you have to fire it. It's like it cycles perfectly, like this, right? Like mm, all day long, everything yeah. works. You put a dart in it, and for some reason it just likes to shit itself. Every time. <laughs> Every time. Um, so the one actually on their Thingiverse page for the wiring diagram was mine because I was one of the first people to build it. Mm -hmm. when this was the first print, uh, blaster I fully 3D printed off my Impruso. I am... Um, but it, it, the definition of finicky, it does get good performance. Um, it is not the Here... most comfortable, but it is posterable. Here... Here's my issue. I feel like the practicality of it, because like at least with like some of these blasters, obviously they're not super practical. 
but you they're reliable. And I think the reliability of the Viper drags it down a lot. It's also not the easiest one to print. Or at least I did not have a fun time printing mine. Uh, for me personally, I, I... And I've not heard from anybody else who also has a Viper have a good time with them. Like, I'm considering D tier for the Viper. I would love for it to work better. I didn't, have, I didn't have very many issues with printing, I don't think. No. It, it could have been um, me. It, it been was years so ago. <laughs> um. Yeah, like the... I think the fact that it's not reliable is a very big issue. Yes. And I can't I mean, again, unless you want to argue with me, I see a lot of people saying C tier. Um, like I like the I like how it looks. I think the idea behind it is amazing. If it was reliable, I'd be more than happy to put it in A tier. But <laughs> here's my issue: if it was a C tier blaster, I'd be putting it in a loadout and actually using it occasionally for fun. Mm. I don't. It sits on my wall and it. That's. Looks that's a good way of putting it. Like, am, is D... One second, I got D, You're good. I like the way that he said that. Like, uh, C tier means he's actually using it in a loadout. Uh, he can see load using it in a loadout. I, I'm not... I, I don't think I'll ever use the... And we'll, we'll get to the Magpie later, which has similar issues uh, in my... From, <laughs> from my issues trying to assemble mine as well. We'll get there. So in the meantime, I'm going to move on to one. Ah, here he is. I'm going to grab the magpie. Not the magpie. I'm going to grab the, the dessert pigeon, which is a, again, was a, I think the first flywheel of the world pistol. Um, uh, it, it definitely changed things, uh, being mag compatible. And the Woozy has not been rated yet, which is funny because I don't think the Woozy is on here uh, currently for some reason. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to wait for a trip well, to get back. Forget the Woozy. Oops. I thought, no, I grabbed it. I don't think the file loaded onto the uh, thing here. I think I lost, maybe lost a couple of them because the Woozy should be on here. Cause I, I, I know I grabbed it because I said that earlier in the chat when we were talking about it. Um, what are your thoughts on the dessert pigeon? I, it's a pain to print because of how big it is. Like you, and if it lifts at all, it messes everything up. It's not the easiest to assemble again, from my experience, but it performs well and it's holsterable and it's practical. It's a good blaster. So, I mean, I'd be fine putting it with a or B. I'm curious of your thoughts, Quinn. Um, I would definitely be inclined for B, um, B. just because reliability. Um, it mm. comes back to that again. Uh, that I see so many pigeons like, oh, yeah, I got a pigeon. It works great. And they shoot like half a mag and all of a sudden it stops working. They're like, one second, this isn't a problem. Let me go fix it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Talking about that. All right, then, yeah. If reliability is still a problem, oh, <laughs> yeah, I can agree. it's a grass snake with better aesthetics, but worse printing and assembly and functionality. Again, it's it's the more the more stuff you add to a blaster, the less the the, the harder it's going to be to make it function because more moving parts. Yeah, I was really surprised, and that's where the gecko kind of is like <laughs> surprising me. The amount of moving parts and like yeah. the priming, like the, yeah. the prime lock and this, and like everything up here moving. I'm like, oh, you would think that things wouldn't work as well, but it 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 does. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. Now, true. Don't forget, it's it's not just one person getting a perfectly functional blaster. We're talking about the community as a whole building it for themselves and going off of that. 
It's not I the, totally the it's not what the blaster can do. It's what has the community experienced? Which I mean, for like, the most for example, part... go ahead. I have a functional zinc. Almost no one else does right now. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, yeah. No, that I Discord's agree. a so... disaster. Everyone's screaming. <laughs> Again, which is why I haven't been participating, and I'm just waiting. <laughs> no, so I, I, I think that it's very comfortable in B tier. It, it's... I mean, if you look at B tier, there's some really good blasters in B tier, so it's got plenty of good company. Um, so uh, I next... wish I could put you on speaker so Josh could join in more avidly, but I feel like if I do that, you're going to hear yourself more. <laughs> yeah, you unfortunately. I'm sorry, Josh. Uh, next up, we have the Lepus. It was a view. Oh, Josh said you still have an echo if you're listening to the stream. That's... Oh, I still have an echo? Yeah, he said that was like a half an hour ago. Maybe because maybe it's here. Let's see. I have. Oh, so it couldn't have been that. Hmm. We hear an echo of Neil. An echo. That English, though. <laughs> there is now two spelt wrong. Um, let me see if I can fix <laughs> that at all. I was trying to figure out where all those boxes came from. Yeah. Oh, they're all wrapped. Okay, as long as the echo is not too distracting, I can deal with a little bit of an echo. Like, unfortunately, with having Quinn in there as well. Um, so for, we're talking about the Lepis now. Group. I'm going to try it. Try just what? to see if it's a problem. Oh, geez. Headphone users, be wary. He's going to try putting me on speaker so Josh can join in on the uh, conversation. Okay. Output is changed. Are we going to die? Output is faint. Um, we we doing all right? Are we? I mean, I guess it would require for me to talk for people to actually. I I don't hear an echo of me, which I did Maybe. earlier. Okay, cool. cool. So we'll run with this then. All right, cool, 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 cool. I don't um, have to have headphones in. <laughs> the there we go. All right, um, we're talking about the Lepus now. I have not personally Gosh, built the Lepus, Lepus, but I've seen a lot of it from a few people. You said you've built the Lepus? Yes. Josh did. So, really cool blaster. Um, it works great if you run it on the 20 rounds per second motor. If you try it at 50, it's really not that great in my experience. Takes a lot of fine tuning. Okay. For twenty or lower, it's fantastic. Okay. You were almost like, hitting the tail end of the next start. I wasn't getting consistent firing out of the fifty ever. It's hilarious, but it's not very usable. Like anything lower than. <laughs> no, I, I agree. With, that, that's what I've been waiting to say from Grimdark. It is a very ugly blaster. I understand it's supposed to be very minimal, and they got that. Oh, boy, is it ugly. <laughs> like, I think the Lepus is... The best use for a Lepus would be a Master Key. I kind of wish that was a tack route, to be honest. Yeah, because that's another good question, is how the heck are you supposed to holster that thing? Yeah, there's, there's, you'd have to holster the mag. Like, you'd have to put the mag in the holster, have the blaster out the top. Borderland status. At the end of reloading, you just chuck it. <laughs> <laughs> and boring. It comes back. Yeah. No, and I can agree with your trip. Um, I never Ooh. see the Lepus anywhere. But I also feel like it hasn't gotten as much attention as the Blasters, too. Um, see, there's also the other issue. I don't know about wars right now, though. Like, how much Blasters are actually seeing love because we're all trapped indoors. I mean, that's a very fair point. That's a very, very fair point. Um would run that thing in a war, but there aren't any wars to speak of, so... That's Especially fair. around here. Everyone <laughs> yeah. is super COVID conscious, and so be it. Um, no, no, but no, like, no, absolutely. It's, it's... I feel like there should be a couple COVID safe wars if, if <laughs> properly run, but that always throws in other issues as well. Yeah. Like I said, I think there's also a lack of attention being put on the Lepus. Um, I think, I, mostly I think because of how it looks. I think it, because it's an ugly blaster, people are like, not giving it the time of day, 
which kind of fair. It's it's an ugly blaster. Like I, I I'm between. I, I can put it on a B tier. I if you think it's not overly difficult to assemble. It was pretty easy. Pretty simple. I would say where its downfalls will be will be battery size to wire size. <laughs> and just aesthetics. Oh, I will say, um, the the JST connector they gave me for the battery. Mm -hmm. um, Mass and frame. I hooked that thing up and within maybe five or ten magazines it had melted itself and almost caused a lightwood fire. Fun. No. <laughs> Sketch. So now it's running an XT30 instead of the <laughs> JST. The problem was I... the 22 gauge wire that they had on there, not the connector itself. Mm. I do like how they do the half shell with one thumb to screw, basically. Yeah. Boop. That is, that's pretty nice. So you're thinking what, B or C? Like pushers. Yeah, and the pusher he has on a plug, so you just pull it out, plug it back in, put a new yeah, pusher. Yeah, just like pull it out, plug, new one. I mean, you could almost do this mid-game if you really wanted to, because it is just that fast. So, I mean, what are you thinking, Josh, B or C? Breaking wins in B, by the way. If you need, let me let me catch up on what all is in B and C. Uh, B, we have the FTEC, the Mistress Key, the Breaking Wind, the Mega Burn, the Mega Baron U, the YU Burn, and the Des Dessert Pigeon. Uh, C, we have the Hyper, the Flak, the Esper, the Rival Burn, the uh, uh, Piranha, the Twig Snake, the uh, Meeker, Hot Coin, Band, Power Blasters, and the Tempest. Mm. It normally is cheap, except for we decided to run Merlins in this. <laughs> oh, that'll push up the price. <laughs> yeah, mostly because they were very limited at the time. It's a Christmas present, so, so I'm, things here I'm like okay here. with putting it... I think I'm okay with putting it in B. I think that's fair. I think it's... Pref it's main drawbacks is just that it's ugly. I think that's Borderline. his biggest drawback. I wish you could drag on middle lines. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Next we have the... Oh, what was this thing called? Oh, I've seen pictures of it. I've never... Oh, no. I had to pull up the actual picture so because it has, it has the uh, name of it on the blaster. I just got to pull up the picture. Da -da -da -da. Uh, the saber that's what it is i believe you can get the files for the saber i believe it's not the a it's not the abr it's the saber um uh only thing i know about the saber is from drax review it's a very big blaster for it's it's like the blaster is like ninety percent aesthetics. <laughs> like it's a solenoid pusher, uh, bullpup. Yeah. Uh, the saber and the ABR are practically the same. <laughs> like I honestly thought the ABR was the saber when I first saw it. <laughs> Yeah, and that is actually true. The saber has been out for a long time. I think it's just way too big for what it's designed to do. Like that that's the thing. I don't even know if you could fit that on a standard print bed. Like you need like a CR10 or something like that. Yeah, they're pretty chonky just from the images I've seen. I have not I've never seen one in person, which Same. makes we talked about that as a requirement too. Things that yeah. we've actually seen built. Um, yeah, I, I remember. Mean, again, I only remember. I, I think it's because the guy. Actually, I could be wrong. I don't think either the files were available and aren't now. I know it's designed by. It's designed by the same. I don't know what I'm gonna say because I'm not sure. But like, it's a very large print, and it's it's, it's yeah. that already. It, it was interesting. Okay. It just 
it's too big for it's too big for the uh what it does like i i feel like it's just if you really love that aesthetic it's for you but like i agree with that statement it looks stupidly comfy it does (laughs) i i don't know like it's it's not for me i guess I can put it in C tier if you want. It just seems too big for me for what it does. I don't know any stats on it. I don't know about files. I think D is where it kind of belongs. It's just All like right. the bulwark. Unfortunately, we... I don't know much about it. That that That's on me. I just don't know. Does anybody know anything about the Saber? See, that's another thing. Okay, game. the next blaster. The next blaster I have problems with. What's that? Really? An entry cost of stupid. Um, oh, is that the... <laughs> The Micro CO2 burst. powered shell. All com featured? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, anything um, CO2 power is going to be way more expensive than it's worth for a North Blaster. And I will agree with you on that one. A to S tier for what it is. Oh, yeah. D tier for price <laughs> and availability. Like, yeah. I'm more than happy to stick it in C tier with the other HPA blasters because, again, you're still going to run into the issue of where can you use it? It's. Ugh. I Say you're, you're, love yeah, uh, yeah. the microburst. I do. Oh. I need to build one, but it requires buying another regulator, which I don't want to do. Uh. Stupid, powerful D tier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, honestly, I kind of would trip on this one though, just because of it's even your other HPA is more accessible, more usable, and just, yeah. just like I don't. Mm, what? That yeah, but like you're not. Is, you're not comparing it to a prime member. You're looking at like, yes, the cost of it is much higher uh, than any other sidearm that you have on there. However, you got to realize it's also you can run it as a pistol, you can run it as a master key, you can use it with spring thunder shells. I think the versatility of it saves it from D tier. Like, <laughs> you have no idea how much I want to build one of these. But again, like if everyone. Yeah, no, you're right. The CO2 cartridges. I keep forgetting about CO2 cartridges, and it that really, really puts it down. Because, yeah, if you only get, like, ten shots out of a single cartridge. Uh... Yeah. Yeah, but it's ten shots as a if master you more, key. But... If you got more shots for cartridge, I could see it being better. Um, it's a very, like, like, it's hard because I'm trying to argue for C tier, but I, I don't. Uh, that sucks. Because I do really love them. But again, like, this is where we reiterate. Nothing on this list is bad. In my opinion. The, none of these are a bad blaster. They may not be our preference, but none of them are a bad blaster. Uh, the next couple of ones are also by the same guy. And they're all HPA. Um, so we're going to run into similar problems. Again, this one, I've looked into... the. Actually, no. What am I doing? This one's not even available in file form. What am I thinking? Sorry. That as some every now and again I run across one. And I'm like, oh wait, no, I don't. That, those files aren't available. This one I'm also going to put in D tier. It's another cartridge one that's also. It's. It looks so fun. It's a. It's literally like a sniper rifle. You have a brass chamber that you pull back, load a single dart in chamber fire it's a single shot co2 cartridge sniper rifle (laughs) Uh, (laughs) and i have no defenses other than the fact that it's so cool (laughs) Uh, i would say there might be one bad blaster and that might just be the viper it looks good but like it's actually just kind of bad (laughs) (laughs) i will not say that any of these blasters are bad because I don't want to dump on anybody else's taste because I think it's just not for me. Uh, next if you up, can make a paper work consistently, this one, I think this, you just changed my opinion. That's this one, in my opinion, us. might be... I might be able to argue for B tier. Now, I know I'm going to have to do that. This is the Nidora. I think it's called the Nidora. I believe that's what it's called. Yeah, oh, I know the maker. He's a really nice guy. Yeah, um, like, it's really cool. It's just like, it just sucks that HPA has, it, it is, it's just a shame that the U.S. has issues with HPA, which cause problems. 
every every country's issues with HPA. Um, I would say probably C. It, it's definitely a lot higher class for performance, but Neuroda. It, that's what it is. Neuroda. It, I had to look up the it's name. It's the community standard. It's the price point. It's really there, neat. It's huh? Oh, sorry. You're you're still arguing for C. It's still yeah. like you're gonna run. The only thing that if I'm comparing it directly with the Lepis, because that's that's what we're looking at here. We're looking at the comparison between the Lep. Is it so much better than the Lepis that it deserves to be in D, B tier? Um, because like I think it's aesthetically better, uh, but I think it is a little. Then the Tempest is extremely easy to assemble. Like you literally just. You put the internals together, and then you just plop them into the blaster. It's that ridiculous. Yeah. I think the only thing that the Nidora does better than the Tempest is that it looks better. Uh, as much as I would love to. I think it's still a C tier. No. Um, now, Trip, I will say, if you try to put an FPS limit on an HPA blaster in comparison, it, that whole thing is dumb. You either allow HPA at the FPS limit or you don't allow HPA. I have, I will follow any club rules that allow HPA. However, I think that idea is dumb. But that is just my opinion on that. That you either allow HPA or you don't. This whole like, well, we have to limit HPA because it's too powerful. It's not too powerful. That that's no, it's not too powerful. Anyways, that I, I have my own rants to go off on HPA because there's a lot of misinformation about it. But I, I will continue on. Uh, next up, we have the um, Argus 2, which I've only seen one other person with an Argus 2. Do you know much about the Argus 2, Quinn? No. Okay. It's another, like, Mag Springer, Magwell, Caliburn style ish like i i feel bad comparing everything to a caliburn but like it came first <laughs> yeah it oh well, yeah like that's the thing the caliburn was the first thing so if it's a pump action springer it's gonna get compared to the caliburn <laughs> that's just the way it goes <laughs> isn't it just a pretty caliburn yeah valor's the only person i've seen with an argus and from what i understand is like the hardware is not easy to get I don't know much about the printing. Uh, maybe. You still on my ear, Quinn? Yeah, I'm just thinking. Okay. I was. B? C? Just I'm because gonna, it's on. I'm going to put it in C strictly for its scarcity. That, that's where I'm going to lean. I think because of how hard they are to get, I'm going to put it at C. I mean, again, it, it functions like a caliber, and so, I mean, I can't dock its performance. It's just... It looks good, but, like, you can't really build one without finding all the hardware. It's just, eh, Sorry. Uh, next up, we have the mini key, which is just a smaller. For the mini key, here's. It's trick. The mini key is tricky for me, because like, like I get that in the Star Wars meme. We want to be going up, not down. I don't necessarily see the point in shrinking the mistress key. But, like, I'm fine with putting it in a B if we want to do that. I personally just don't see the point in a mini key in comparison to the mistress key. Um, I mean, she is at least being honest. She says B to C as well. Uh, oh, yeah, it is. I see it. Yeah, like, I like the idea behind it. It's neat to have a smaller, a smaller blaster. I just don't... I don't... I don't know. I just don't see the point in going smaller 
when the mistress key is already like you might as well just get the mistress key i again that's just me i just don't see oh a weight thing I, how much weight how much less does a mistress mini key weigh a side mount maybe i don't know like for me personally i don't see i, I guess yeah yeah like trip saying it's like he doesn't think it at it takes away anything, but it doesn't. Well, it does take away. It takes away performance. It absolutely takes away performance with that. Okay. So we got both creators saying, well, one saying B or C, the other one saying C. So good. So yeah, I feel bad hey. because I'm, fr I'm friends with them and they're in the chat. So it's like you feel all that pressure to be like, <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I mean, if you feel so bad, you can always move on. <laughs> Yeah, but I still have to be honest about it. <laughs> um, I also I, see we have the Venturi in there. Uh, the Venturi oh, is... Right yeah, right here. The, I'm pretty sure the files are... The fly point... I don't know what the... The fly point shouldn't be in here, though, because the files are not available for the fly point. As much as I oh, love the fly point... No. Uh, as far as I know, they are not. And there really? is... So not only is there not a there's not a hardware kit for it, and it takes a lot of custom hardware. Not like metal bars or anything, but like all the springs are like custom wound. That makes sense, though. Yeah, like it's like so it's pretty much impossible to source your own hardware for the Flypoint pistol, which automatically puts it in D, unfortunately. And it's it's it's. As much as I love the Flypoint pistol, I could gush about the Flypoint pistol all day, but unfortunately, I don't think the files are available, and I don't think the hardware, there's no hardware available for it either. So, that automatically puts it in D. <laughs> yeah. All right, so Venturi um, files Venturi. are also not public. Okay, that was my mistake. I did not double check that one, so I will put that one in D as well. Because, again, we are specifically looking at this from a community-based standpoint. Mentality. Yeah, and exactly. Venturi's stupid expensive that it is like the new one has like metal side plates and everything. it looks amazing and it looks so much fun but woo! <laughs> i mean next... this entry is basically a zinc is it not like just an overly complex zinc well it came first though the venturi has been out yes. for a while a long while yes um again i think the price point just held a lot of people away from it because it's like two to three hundred bucks and the new yeah. one even has like custom built like yeah aluminum yeah and it looks nice room. it looks really nice uh next up we have uh adrian's um uh, fancy looking rainbow pistol pretty much <laughs> i i love the aesthetic i know it looks like a glock and i know there's a lot of issues with that but i think it's kind of cool um i, I haven't built I, it I but it one. looks it looks cool it's just a rainbow pistol, is it not? Yeah, it's just a rainbow pistol. So um, it's... Props for making a rainbow pistol finally look halfway decent. Um... Well, here, I'll bring the rainbow pistol over here as well. So let's let's actually talk about the rainbow pistol first, because I think that the other one's going to be slightly lowered, because, yes, it's improving its aesthetics. It's making it, I'm assuming, harder to build. I'm going to guess. Or we could just rank them together. <laughs> I'd the... be inclined to go like C to B, and it, or um, here's the thing: the rainbow, the rainbow pistol is grip cool. is awful. The grip on the rainbow pistol is absolutely awful. It's way too thin. For I'd least... be inclined to go like D tier for the normal rainbow, really, because it's such no, no, no. See, I, that seems way too low because power. the rainbow pistol was is still very important to like that is still the beginning for a lot of the higher fps hobby so i wouldn't feel right putting it any lower than a c uh i don't uh, oh you might need to adjust the your stream what's going on what happened each here for quinn placement hey <laughs> <laughs> um sorry hold on i was not to a game over here i've got some darts to show you <laughs> <laughs> so 
Sorry, I, I, I was looking at my um, tier list. I was not paying attention to stream. Um, Apparently, Boomstick's just sticking me in the D class. But, you know, whatever. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, no, no. Hold on. We got to fix that. We got to put... Need, we need to put Quinn need. way up here in S class. There we go. Much better. <laughs> uh, ah, no. I just moved that way more than I meant to. Quinn, you've got me messing up the whole stream now. <laughs> this is your fault. I blame you. <laughs> here. Okay, I fixed it. I think. Okay. Just lower this down a little bit. There we go. <laughs> okay, so Rainbow Pistol. Uh, you're thinking... The it's main, not comfortable. Just because it's high performance, but it's only one shot. It is easily accessible. It is very easily accessible. It's easy to build as well. I'm floating between B and C. What is the what is the crowd think? Let's see. I'd say C, just because the other one looks so much better. All right, so here, I had the Falcon in my list. It's not here though. Like I had the picture of it. I grabbed it. I thought I uploaded it. Ah. Let's see what bottom. Ah. I I gotta zoom this out. I get, I guess I'm too. And let me let me zoom the uh, thing out some. Yeah, let me do it this way. It must be a cow. I need to be moved. <laughs> I'm gonna move things around. Moving things around. Moving it around. Okay, everyone's saying C for rainbow anyway. So yay, I was right. <laughs> okay. I'm going to use you to cover up my ads. That's a new one. Is this an insult or a compliment? <laughs> uh, I'm just trying to improve stream some so they can I'm see what I'm talking I'm trying to move things around a bit. Oh, yeah. So Buddy has a point. The Rainbow Pistol, unfortunately, now is just very dated. It's an old design that's just very dated. So I think C tier is a good fit for it. Now, the question is, Adrian's rainbow pistol thing, I can't remember the name of off the top of my head. Um, why do you know ad block? <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think C tier is uh, so. For Adrian's Rainbow Pistol, essentially, does that put it any higher? Because I think honestly, I think I'm just gonna put that one on the same level. It's a nicer design, but it's still a Rainbow, Rainbow pistol, pistol, and it's still confined to its same problems. Now, next up, uh, uh, next up, we have the Fominator, which is an incredibly fun blaster that's not hard to print but is a pain in the ass to assemble and its performance is only okay. It does yeah, not perform as... And there's no hardware kit. You have to make some custom hardware yourself. Not that it's hard to source, but like, it's still a pain. Uh, sourcing's easy-ish, <laughs> but the issue is uh, tapping out the brass. If you yes. can drill the brass... That, cut, the like, the way, really like... It was a clever design that is a pain to do. Like, I, I, I haven't been able to get to my normal place where I have better tools, so I haven't been able to finish mine. As much as I love this blaster, I think it has to go in D tier just for it not being... It's an incredibly gimmicky blaster. It's really fun. It's not practical at all. I, I, I just... I don't see yeah. how it's possibly... What I do is I kind of want to build one, but I want to slap um, the spec BZ in it. And yes. The yes, yes, me too. too. I have plans. I've, I've actually, actually, I started working on doing that. I just, all, all my Tinkercad stuff is like really taking a back seat lately. I really need to get back into that. I'm trying to better cover this up. But yeah, no, for sure. I mean, I, I, I just don't think I can put it any higher. It it's just like, 
play with it at all costs. Like, it would be so much fun it's to gotta be... What was that, Quinn? What I want to do is stick um, one of those holster magnets on the tack rail. So you can just <laughs> throw it to your back with an HPA tank. That would be amazing. Yeah. But again, you'd also I run into the same problems you have with HPA. You've now made an ex a <laughs> hard-to-build blaster way more expensive. You still there, Quinn? Uh, you still there, Quinn? It, it is more expensive, and it's a lot harder to build. I don't know if it belongs in D, just because it is functional. It is. It does take tuning, though. It does take time. I've I got it. I've got to bounce between C and D. Well, here's the thing. Like I got this. I I I put it on par with the second degree burn, which is also in D. Okay, I can like, see it. It's 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 in D with other like <laughs> technically speaking. Like we're probably being a little unfair to the uh, the uh, the uh, uh, words grass snake, but like no, no that's right. No, we we, we 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 put it there because it was worse than the the original, <laughs> which is like going backwards. <laughs> um. <laughs> um yeah it's yeah i do need i need two other guests to cover up my ads <laughs> all right so next we have is this uh the griffin the griffin is next i have no personal experience seems pretty straightforward and easy yeah it seems pretty reliable for the semi-auto i've I think heard it's a solid platform. i've heard very good things about it um has anybody in chat actually built or used a griffin now we wait 20 seconds <laughs> for them to hear me actually longer than that because then they have to write a response oh i take that back i have used one before oh you have um yeah it was well, one of my friends, Tyler's. Um, mm. It was yeah, pretty I, nice. I, I, uh, I his was... kid was running it in the Sarah Hemlockport. Not Sarah Hemlockport, but... Um, oh, that's Force. right. There is a guy at Uno who actually has one. I forgot about that. Yeah, like, it seems like a decent blaster. Like, I'm I, I'm with Trip. Like, I'm perfectly fine putting it in B. It's like, it's, it's a decent blaster. Yeah, like, for a semi-auto flywheel... I personally don't like horizontal flywheels because I like sleep. I, I, I like it to be more uniform. I just have this thing against horizontal flywheels. It was my one gripe about the FDL basic is the horizontal flywheels. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. wide. Which, that's the next one, isn't it? <laughs> my... Uh, yeah, buddy is here to learn. Hey, buddy, buddy, how long has it been since you've been out of the hobby? He was actually buddy, uh, buddy in the chat. He was one of my old admins years ago for the Maryland Nerf Herders. Been a while. <laughs> um, so next up we have. Well, he doesn't have the separate wall. What? He doesn't have to suffer through all sixty blasters. At least. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, next up, we have the FDL Two X, which pretty much is all the performance of the three in a worse shell design, in my opinion. And I, I Can we personally. Talk about the FDL One. Oh yeah, and it's like it. <laughs> the FDL... what was I actually kind of liked the look of the FDL One, the drum one. Oh, or I know. Drum, or is it? I loved, I loved the FDL One firing mega darts. Absolutely. I thought it was pretty nifty. I don't know why. It just struck me as cool. I like skip over two. <laughs> I'm oh, thinking for two. It's still it's just as expensive as a three. Doesn't look as good. A quarter inch. Okay. Do we want to put the two in B or C tier? I'm leaning towards B.
I mean, where would it, where would we put the FDL three? A. Uh, yeah, and again, it's going to have the same yeah. issues as the A, but in a worse shell design. So I'm kind of okay with putting it in B. Yeah, probably. Yeah, because it's still a probably really good like the two was still a really good blaster. I just think that the three looked way better. Like the the three looks so much better than the two. I, I, I do not like how the FDL two looks. I really don't. Um I think we've got Meeker in the chat too now, so this will be fitting because we're getting to the Meeker uh Mark eighteen. Which oh, is he's in the chat now? Yeah, he's in the chat. Oh now. there he is. <laughs> so we've got the Meeker Mark eighteen, which is a very modular platform. You could have it be pretty much whatever. You could have shotgun blast. You could have single blast. It's it's a it's a modular. It's like the next evolution of the rainbow pistol, pretty much. I think I'd put it in B. That that was my thinking as well. I printed one off. I just need to assemble it. Uh... I have not built one yet, even though we talk quite often. I should build one. Just I know. Because... I need to build one as well. I have. Funny thing is, I have mine completely printed. It's one hundred percent printed. I just need to get the hardware for it, <laughs> and I am lazy. <laughs> um, How's your? Uh, did your kit arrive in one piece for the? Um... For the oh, gecko. Gecko. Yeah. 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 I got. It. I told you. I got to take a picture of that for you. Later, I appreciate the sticker that's going on my blaster case. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, the meat, like, uh, June had a good point. It's pretty much, like, right there in the same category as the Mistress Key and the, uh... It's probably a little bit more useful than the Breaking Wind and Mistress Key, in my opinion. Just, like, a little bit, because it has more power going through it, I think, question mark. Um, I, I have my hands on one, so I can't say uh, from what I've seen from the uh, other people I know who have one. Um, but I think it's right there along the same level as those to actually... Because, uh, yeah, you could... It does have more options than both of those. It's pretty much both of those combined. <laughs> uh, I don't... Hmm. It's still a single shot, but it gets really good power. Mm. I, I do you think it deserves? Mm -mm. No, I think I'm gonna leave it in B. I'm gonna leave it in B. I don't think. I don't think I can push it up to an A. For the magpie? I'm no, no, sorry. No, 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 no. Uh, I'm talking. I'm talking about the. Uh, I've been debating the uh, Meeker Mark 18. Uh, B. I'm yeah. still with B on it. Yeah. Now we're up to the magpie. Which I was going to build, but I got too scared. I never got mine fully working, and I there's it's the same situation as the Viper. It really is. There's no way it's an A trip. There's absolutely no way it's an A. It's not reliable enough. No, no, no. He's talking about um, the Mika. Oh, I'm sorry. No, the I thought he was talking. I thought he was talking about the. Uh, <laughs> um, you can see both options. Um, for the meek out because I the meek yeah. because we were you know what? I'll, but, I'll go ahead. I, I will go ahead and slap that into A. For I'm, the, I'm perfectly fine with it being an A. Magpie, I'm. It's the complexity, the reliability. It's right next to the Viper. Like I, it looks so nice though. Like I, I'm it willing. It's C tier on aesthetics alone. I'm willing to, but like, I'm willing to put it in C tier. I in my, I'm willing to put it in C tier. I would trip. It looks like an S tier, but the issue is it cannot. It does not perform like that. <laughs> yeah, I. Yeah, it looks so amazing. It's so cool. If well, again, I got mine to work without darts, <laughs> but as soon as I threw darts, as soon as I tried putting darts in it, it was just unreliable as anything. I was so fed up with it by the end of it. Oh man, it's it, it's so sad. I think that's just a problem of cylinder flywheelers, 
Well, it's a hammer. Okay, you, it's it's a hammer prime cylinder fed flywheel. That is a lot of moving parts. A lot with blowback. <laughs> so many moving parts in that. See, it's not the Delrin parts. I had the Delrin parts. They don't help that much. <laughs> the only re see the machine Delrin parts don't make it more reliable. It just means that they're not going to break. That's the thing. So like I think, <laughs> oh no, no, oh dear, snap, and oh, no, did everything gone. just go away? Yeah. Oh no no no. Okay okay we got it back. It's back. <laughs> I was so scared from it. We were so close. We have. <laughs> oh, give me a heart attack. <laughs> so I think we're gonna say the magpie is in C, correct? Okay. Uh, next up, we have the Axiom. It's another HPA blaster. I think it's just gonna go right along with the other ones. I, I don't think it's necessarily worse. I just don't think it's necessarily better enough to move it anywhere. I think it's just, yeah, it's 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 an HPA blaster along that same line. It has all the same drawbacks as all the other ones do. Uh, but it's okay. <laughs> yeah, see, I can see this, the, the chat just got to the part where the screen went blank. <laughs> oh, man, that gave me uh, a heart attack. And next, we are up to the Camara now. Now, I'm not going to go into oh, anything sorry. else about the Camara in dealing with its distribution, specifically talking about assembly, printing, and all the other stuff that goes along with it. Who actually likes those aesthetics better? I, I'm waiting because I think, I think it looks, it's ugly. Really? I don't think it looks ugly. I think it looks fine. But like... Oh, uh, okay. It's just me then. That's fine. <laughs> I'm. It's still, from what I understand, harder to assemble. There's. Mm. Yeah, it's like I like the aesthetics of it. The Camaro was an oh, offshoot of the caliber, and like most things. <laughs> uh, slash talent clock. Yes, yeah, slash talent clock. Um, yeah. I'm willing. To put it in B, but it, it's not the easiest to get hardware for it, from what I understand. Yeah, it's hard. From what I've heard, it's it's hard to build, and hardware is not the easiest. But performance and aesthetics. Oh, so so I'm saying that there are hardware kits now. I think I might build one of them. Okay, so it's got amazing. Okay, frontline foam cell sells them okay yeah i'm thinking honestly my personal would be b but i understand if it goes higher i'm but... kind of okay with a because you can get some insane performance out of it it has a lot of little hiccups if this was like a year or two ago it would probably be much lower it is more accessible now and that's a big deal if the trigger linkage is finicky um, I would go lower just because I have a huge issue with blasters that aren't reliable compared to like prices and other things. Like, mm. I mean, that's fair. Like I said, I have not built a Camaro or seen yeah, one in yeah. person, so I can't say for <laughs> sure. That is a hundred percent fair. So we will move it down to B, but still a very, very, very good blister. Bla blaster. Blah. Okay. Hey, cool. All right, we're almost done. We got six left. We've got all the rad blasters. <laughs> now, I don't know how it's so easy. <laughs> how much do you know about all the rad blasters? Hey, Dr. Flux is in here. Hey, Dr. Flux. Welcome aboard. Hey, just... <laughs> hey no, you gotta just... move me out now. He just came by <laughs> to make sure that the links was in S tier. <laughs> <laughs> links just oh, had to be man. S tier. Just want to comment on each day. <laughs> it's an SS. I don't know if that's a good thing or not. Um, Quinn, do you have any experience with the Rad Blasters? The only I one. I do not. 
The only one I know anything about is the pretty fly. That's the only one I know anything about. I don't know much about the others. Um, I think Flux has one, don't you? Is he still it's, in the uh, chat? It's <laughs> I had the... No, the hummingbird's right there. What are you talking about, Trip? It's right there. <laughs> uh, um, we don't have the boozy. Though. The rad blasters, Dr. Uh, the reason I'm missing some of Heath's stuff is because one of the requirements for this list is I had to see somebody else have the blaster made other than the creator. If only the creator has has a functioning version of that blaster, then it's not on this list. So I didn't include oh. several of Heath's stuffs because he's the only one who has it. No, I was talking more about the rad blasters. Um, I've definitely seen a woozy. A what? Of the woozy. Is it not, did it just not get included? I, I had the picture. I thought I put it up here, but it's not on here. I'm talking about the rad blasters right now. Um. Yeah, I've not seen. Uh, it's. As far as I'm aware, they are, if they're similar, if the other ones are, I, I, I just don't know anything about these three, unfortunately. I know about the Pretty Fly, so let me talk about the Pretty Fly first. The Pretty Fly, I believe, is the ranking, the highest rank for Flywheel Blaster builds. I believe the highest FPS people have been getting out of it, I think, is 250, 260, I believe so. Um... It's a pretty fly. The, it's the dual stage. Now, it's the dual stage flywheel flywheel blaster right here. Um, I have one printed. I just need to assemble it, but it requires learning solenoid, which I have to still have to do because it's a solenoid pusher. Um, so I mean, there is the extra. Like its performance is amazing. I, I do like the shell. It's a very unique blaster. But I don't know how... Again, it does have require that extra bit of knowledge to go into it. So, I mean, I, I consider it a solid B tier. High B tier, in my opinion. Oh, yeah, that's a fair point. Highest brushed blaster. I, I will... Uh, that's very interesting at best. Yeah. Yeah, so like I've heard really good things about it. It looks I'm, like it has some printability. I will go ahead and throw that into A tier, with the caveat being you do have to learn Solenoid, which from what I've heard is not bad. It's just I don't know Solenoid builds, which I need to do because I do want to build a... Uh, what's the word? It's that blaster. Uh, I don't remember the blaster's name, and it is completely eluding me now. But anyways, I want to learn so much. These, I'm, is, I'm not putting them in D tier because anything against them. I just, I was hoping that Quinn would know something about them. And I just don't know anything about them. The Pretty Fly is the only one I've heard anything about. So unfortunately, these are going in D tier just based off the fact that I know nothing about it. I mean, if you have logic level stuff, solenoids aren't that hard. Yeah. Like again, that's just, that's a me thing. Like I need to learn solenoids. That that's just what I need to do. Um, since Flux is here and he knows about that, so we're gonna do. Quinn, can you help me remember the name of this blaster? I had it in my head, and now I can't remember it. Hummingbird. Thank you, hummingbird. hummingbird. My word. <laughs> I've heard really good things about the hummingbird. I've not built one myself. That's the one that I want to learn solenoids for, is for the Hummingbird. I've heard really good things about it. For It, it looks great. I've heard it's comfortable. Like, it's... I... I... <laughs> it's a thick boy, but um, it's comfy. It's, it's nice, and it seems pretty reliable. Like, I, I'm... I'm leaning... Like, definitely A, B tier is what I'm leaning... I would say A tier, um, just from the aesthetics to availability to I think it's not that hard to print. Yeah. Um, I've held one and shot one. It's not bad. It's pretty good. So, yeah, 
I like, definitely I'm, see it up there. I'm perfectly happy from uh, with just playing a two. Like, yeah, it's it's. I've heard really good things about it. I mean, anything with solenoids aren't cheap. <laughs> I mean, like, why, I mean, such trip is like it's not cheap. So, but like, yeah, like. Yeah, but now there's the FDL three, <laughs> and yes, it doesn't do everything the FDL three does. But like, like price affects its accessibility, obviously, because you have to pay for components and whatnot, and that makes it less accessible. Um, but yeah, like there's there's sure. lot. Did you just keyboard? What happened? What happened Look in the chat? I think. Trip was trying to spell something and it did not work. Oh, I know what he's and trying to spell. That's an actual name of a blaster. N- it's no, it's the name of a creator, and I think he's close, but not quite. I could be wrong though. Oh, it can, yeah, and, the, and it can do full auto. So I mean, the it's a brushed. It's it uses brushed motors though, right? From what I understand. Uh, I guess. Yeah, but it looks Although, way better than the Pretty Fly. The, the Hummingbird looks so much I mean, better than the Pretty Fly. <laughs> yeah, he was saying that the uh, Hummingbird can be full auto. Um, so I, I'm, uh, I'm pretty comfortable leaving it in A tier. Uh, next up, we have the JSPV. Yikes. What was that? Oh, someone just put a symbol. The hummingbird is three fifty. Whoo! Yeah, but that's if you're buying it pre-assembled, right? Yeah, that's a pre-assembled blaster. I mean, oh, that is almost the same price as an FDL three. That's tough. Oh, but I would leave it in a. If you print it and source your own hardware, it might not be that bad. Not yeah, chill, there are there are reasons why the FDL three is not an S, which we went into. A lot of it has to do with accessibility. Um, that that's the biggest thing. Because again, for anybody who's popped in here since I said it, I'll, we are judging these bastards blasters based off of the community being able to build them. So we're judging it off of how easy it is to print, how easy it is to build. Uh, it's performance, um, it's aesthetics, and how fun it is. So, it, it's, it, that, that's what we're doing. And again, these are all of our own personal opinions of what we think. And obviously, some of these blasters we don't know as well, so you have to take that into account as well. And we'll usually say whether or not we're overly familiar with blasters. But there are so many 3D printed blasters, it's very hard to know all of them and know the ins and outs of all of them as well so and again like the price yes is an aspect but i'm not gonna like hold that against it just because it's more expensive like <laughs> i mean if you're just going off a of price like if you're comparing the price of like a springer to a flywheeler flywheelers tend to be more i mean i could be wrong quinn would you say that flywheelers tend to be a little bit more expensive than the uh springers Um, let me rephrase that getting the same performance if they were to get the same oh. performance uh, FPS wise yes but only because of the fact that I think it goes both ways though because it's harder to make a full out of a springer <laughs> that's fair that's fair <laughs> so hard to compare there I would little, almost be... <laughs> They're a little upset that there's no flywheels in S S tier. <laughs> oh man. I'm trying to think of like if we put a blaster again, the the main thing holding FDL three from <coughs> pardon me, hold on. Oh. <coughs> mm. Alright, so we have the JSPB. Which, I mean, I've seen good things. I don't know a whole lot about it, but I've seen really good things outside of uh, Dr. Flux's video. I don't know much about it. Other than the fact that that thing is apparently super sturdy. <laughs> it's weird, man. Um, 
I don't have one. I just, it wasn't my thing, but a lot of people have loved theirs. So, Same. And they think they're really cool. So, I mean, if people like it and love it, I mean. I mean, uh, Adam is saying that uh, the GSPB is a bit of a pain, that he's heard that the it's a bit of a pain to assemble, which kind of makes sense going off of how it looks. It looks like it'd be a pain. Yeah. Real steel furniture. I too want a chair made of guns. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm a little lost on that one. <laughs> okay, ouch. Um, <laughs> made out of. Yeah, so like pretty much from what I've heard is like. All right. Um, I'm. You want, you want to go B tier or A tier for the JSPB? It's accessible. They've got um, them. It's supposed to be really solid. So, I mean, B tier is fine with me. I would say B. Just, I don't, yeah. I don't know. I honestly don't know on that one. All right. Last one. Last one, Trip. We're almost done. <laughs> Uh, we have the Carnirex Flintlock. Um, okay, I've heard that one's a nightmare. That uh, of is parts. so many small parts. Okay, so here's the thing. This is a gimmick blaster. This is not a performance blaster. It's going to be a pain to assemble. It's not going to get great performance. Unfortunately, I think we're going to have to put it in the same category as the Foma Nature. To where, I, I, again, it's the same thing where, like, I'd love to give it higher. Here. What? It's a good thing Adrian's not here. <laughs> Look, I'm sure he understands that the foam of nature is not an easy assembly. It's just unfortunate. But I feel bad. Because <laughs> I love the foam of nature. All right, so we've got everything in place. Is there anything we want to look at moving? In S tier, we currently have the Caliber and the Talaclaw and the Lynx. Those are all pretty stable. You have in A tier, and I will, I will be, uh, after looking at everything, I will agree. I'm going to move the Spring Thunder down to B tier. Because that's, it, it's, it's, yeah. It, it's, it did what? I know. I know it's a B tier. It's 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 the same thing with the breaking wind. It's very situational. It it uh, I think the gimmick is so fun. I don't think it can hold its place in A tier though. Um I personally wouldn't move flack, but I think we're getting a lot of flack for it. <laughs> well, where do they want to move the flack? Do they want to move it up or down? It sounds like okay. Uh, oh, well, maybe it's just trick. So, uh, real quick, if I had to put the woozy in a tier, that's one. If the files were even still available, which I don't think they are right now, uh, because I do think that the woozy that would be a flywheel contender for S tier, in my opinion. Agreed. Like, but I don't. From what I've heard, is the woozy is not currently available, so. That's one of the requirements to be on this list is it has to be able to be printed by the community. Um, nice. It's it's and yes, the Sovac I'm sure is going to be amazing. However, it's not available at the moment. <laughs> Hence why Gecko oh, or Falcon. The, the Falcon I would put in the same position. I've not built a Falcon, and that was one that I had on the list. That apparently the tier maker didn't want to load up for me. Um, but I did have that one. And it was supposed to go up here. But it didn't. So fantastic. Uh, but the Falcon. Have you ever done any work with the Falcon? Quinn? I, uh, Falcon. I don't, I don't even, not even. 
familiar with it to be honest. Oh, it's the uh, okay. So when the um, dessert pigeon came out, it was katana only. Um. Oh. Okay, so Grimdark is saying that the that Frontline Foam has kits and it had um. Uh, and the, it has a new version of files. Okay, so the files are available and there's kits for it. It is absolutely in S tier. But I can't add it currently because it won't let you add new photos. <laughs> um, so, yes, the Woozy is absolutely an S tier blaster in my opinion. Alright, so if it had even more issues than the Pigeon... Uh, I mean, I'd probably end up putting it in the same category as the uh, pigeon. Where's the pigeon? Where'd we put the pigeon? B tier? Yeah, B tier. I'd probably put it in B tier with, with the pigeon uh, for the falcon. This is where I'd end up putting that one. The lepus is nowhere near the same thing as a woozy. Not even close. Nope. Not even close. Reliability alone. Yeah, that that's not even close. The woozy is at, and you can also can you do dual stage with the lepus? No, not that I'm aware of. You can do I'm dual sure. stage with the woozy. I mean, also thinking about battery size. At least you can take a normal battery in a woozy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, again, I get with the lep that they're meant to be different things. Like the woozy feels more like a primary. The Levis is meant to be a sort of sidearm. Uh, the, yeah, like, no, I will go woozy, especially, like, the new woozy that's coming out, which I'm excited for. The whole looks so complicated with, like, select fire and everything. Yeah, so. No, this... Alan, you tell them. <laughs> uh, so we moved to Spring Thunder. We put the woozy in S. Like, we, we agree on that, that the woozy would go on S. Um, is there anything else that we'd like to move around? Because I think we've got... Sure, this is why we cannot finally have any flywheelers in S. Because by the time we talk about it, everyone's like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what did I forget, Trip? What did I forget? Sanity? I mean, that's entirely plausible. <laughs> As I say, we say, hey, look, flight wheel can go in S. No, that one can't go in S. How dare you? <laughs> what blaster did I forget? I, I, How could I forget? Is it one I have? <laughs> I got to think for a second. <laughs> the, the Wasteland, wasteland Ranger? What's that's, that one? Unless he's, are you talking about the worker one? Like, we can't print oh, that. God. No. That shouldn't even exist. Just... Like, for one, that doesn't even go on this list because we can't print that. That's not something we can print. Again, this entire list is supposed to be things that the community can build. That's why the Jupiter is not on this. That's why the Proud Papa and the Little Rocket's not on this. Um, that's why the Spanf is not on this. That's why the Spanf isn't stop. on The Spanf isn't on it because it has to be a completely 3D printed blaster. The, the Spanf requires the... Uh, Falcon Fire. Uh, that's why the second wind isn't on this either, because it requires a Mega Shock. So it has to be a completely 3D printed blaster. So yeah, that is why the Spamf is not in here. Oh man. <laughs> uh. Catch it. Cats finally start to catch it. They are. They are. I think, like, honestly, I'm pretty comfortable with where where everything is. Um, like, obviously, this is highly opinionated. So it's like there's only so much you can do with it, you know, from going off of our opinions. Really, a conversation like this, you should probably have, like, five people in it. <laughs> I mean, heck? technically, we kind of do with the chat room, but... True. What is the... Cruzot? What the heck is that? The radioactive designs. What is that? I'll have to look that up. I had never heard of that before. 
Alan's piece now. Oh no. Cruise out. <laughs> I'm not finding it. Everything but nerf. Just yeah. touch nerf to the end. I'll probably get ready. I'm, I'm gonna have to, yeah. I was like, nope, that that's not it. That's the hurricane. Wait, how did you get that? Uh, Add it to the end instead of the beginning sometimes? Maybe. Oh, can you see my Google search? <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, not seeing see I'm I, I'm not getting anything. Why well, don't you have, have the no several idea what that is? Sir Ball, which was released two days ago, huh? The serval? Some people are just dead. What the heck is a serval? I'm not sure. Oh, yeah. So uh, here's the thing. Uh, I'd already talked to Quinn about this. We're hoping to do this every year where we talk about uh, the previous year's blasters and actually do the same thing here. This one was very long because we had to go through all the printed blasters that matched the criteria. Um so we'd like to, in the future, do this again, where we talk about the blasters that are... Uh... Uh, yes, I do have the Bullpup Caliburn. It is in A tier, because it's one of my favorite blasters. <laughs> Did not make it to S tier, though. Um, but, yeah, so, like, I I'd love to maybe next time get a couple more creators in here and actually get everyone together. And I hope... Uh... The Axiom, the, pretty much if you notice, pretty much all HBA Blasters ended up in C tier for pretty much the same reasons. Uh, it, 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 uh, unfortunately, with uh, the extra knowledge it takes to use um, the source, the parts are way easier to sort. Oh, the TCU, the, what was what he talking about? Eric Cash is a lot more accessible now. The Bullpup. Was there a bullpup caliburn? Or are they talking about the Chimera? Because as far as I know, there's not a bullpup caliburn. Right? There's the Chimera. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, HPA. Unfortunately, I couldn't get HPA up any higher than C tier, as much as I tried. And you can ask. The rest of chat. I tried to get HPA out of C tier. <laughs> it didn't work. Um, <laughs> there was a bullpup calendar. Caliburn. Quinn, do you remember a bullpup Caliburn? I don't, Josh. Nope. Well, apparently, Hawkeye says there is. <laughs> I got two people. I got Hawkeye and Trip both yelling at me saying there's a bullpup Caliburn. How did I miss that one? When did that one Probably become Probably because a thing? it's a bullpup caliber. <laughs> yeah, but I have a bullpup caliber in you. Let's see. I'm going to try and find it. Oh, yeah. There is one. I mean, with Slug, how do you keep up? Like, let's be real. It's a remix. <laughs> it, well, it wasn't officially released by... If you notice, we don't really have any remixes in here. It's the Mandela effect. So, all right. Well, I think I am going to say goodnight to everyone. It's 1040 here. Not super late, but I have other things I have to do before I can go to bed. So. Hey, look, it's only 740 p.m. over here. <laughs> Oh, man, I have to get ready for my Nerf War in an another month. How's that going, Quinn? Jealous. <laughs> we're lucky. Maryland is currently on a downward trend, so we're hoping by March we can have our first event of the season. Obviously, masks required the entire time. The mask yeah. stays on during Nerf. <laughs> so... Thank you all for joining me for the stream. We had a pretty good attendance, lots of interaction. So thank you all for joining me. Thank you, Quinn and Josh in the background for uh, joining me as well.